Murdoch, what is your live, yo? So uh, I am Chris. This is Drop Dice. These are a bunch of people. You probably recognize them. They show up on here pretty regular. If you don't recognize them, you should probably go back and watch L5R. It's worth it. With that said, let's go around the corner of the uh, squares here and uh, talk about who we're playing. And um, maybe if you guys want to like caption them as like I don't know, space miscreant or whatever you want to call yourselves. Let's start with Murdoch. Ah, uh, I am playing uh, Sorin. I am a uh, a uh, Solarian, I guess. Lashanta Solarian and Starfinder. Apparently, my wife is deciding to blow up the house phone right as we start. Of course, um, so that phone will go off in the middle of me talking again. Um, also, that being the case, uh, I like to fashion myself as a Star Lord Han, Han Solo type character. Um, I'm the face of the party, and you should definitely buy Guns of Icarus online. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, count if I don't get the chance to speak first. That's Tom, you're next up. I'm sure you've got <laughs> lots to pitch. Hmm. Not anymore, I don't. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You have the, you have your, you know, the what is it? The expansion or DLC you had? Mm, true. Uh, Guns of Rickers Alliance, which is out now, allows you to play co-op against AI enemies. So there's that. Uh, anyway, I, I'm Tom. I'll be playing Taylor Donovan Stack, the group's android technomancer. I also double the shift pilot. Excellent. Next up is Nate. My name's Nate. I'm playing uh, Jigen Arendon, who is a soldier. Kind of a gun bunny, heavy armor, heavy weapons specialist. Excellent. Also fancies himself to be a botanist. Excellent. And Jeremy? I am Kobe the Ninth. Uh, I have a large family. I uh, don't like to be seen, and I am friend to all. The ship. Everybody in the ship. Not anybody else. Fuck them. Speaking of people you don't want to be friends with, the uh, the episode starts off with, like, Claxton's blaring. The ship has uh, exited the atmosphere of Xcall 119. There's this huge fire just billowing out the back end. Uh, Colby comes scrambling down the hallway. Um, we're not even going to discuss what caused this to happen as far as me to the, you as the players. If you guys want to insert stuff as to why the ship is on fire as you exit the atmosphere. Don't, don't worry, Chris. We got this. <laughs> as soon as you guys break atmosphere, space will take care of the fire. <laughs> Captain! Captain! What? what? The ship's on fire! Yeah. I think, I think Jigen's at it again. Yeah, Jigen. Press the button. Jigen, stop cooking! We told it's you not, no! It's not me this time. I Wait a second. <laughs> you hear him scurrying off. <laughs> I told him to stop that. He listened to me, Captain. I'm going to go turn the oven off. Okay, so I think the, the next next little bit that we see is Jigen uh, putting out fires inside the kitchen. Taylor, you are exiting the atmosphere and you are uh, getting things in line to be able to make your jump. Um, and you notice that there's something that comes across the sensor array. Uh, there's like five little blips. And they seem to be closing distance on your ship. Oh, dear. Uh... Can I use the sensors to get better readings? Absolutely. Um, so essentially what you're going to do is roll a perception check. Um, your ship, I believe, does not give you any help for sensors. Let me just double check here. If I can make it to the right folder. Oh, dang it. I hate Windows Cloud, by the way, because as soon as you accidentally use it once, it fucks up your whole machine. Yeah, that's why it... Windows. Yeah. Should have been your first clue there, buddy. <laughs> there, I finally found it. Starfinder. Nope. 
You don't have any. You have um, budget mid-range sensors, so they don't give you any bonuses. All right. Fifteen. All right, with a 15, you're able to figure out that they are uh, five small fighter jets uh, or fighter ships uh, that seem to be closing the distance. They're quite a bit faster than you are. Your speed is a six as far as like how many hexes you could travel on a map. Uh, theirs is actually a nine. So they're, they're catching quite up to you quite quickly. Um, for you to be able to make the jump into the drift... You're going to need some cover before you can, you're able to get those coordinates in and make sure that you guys are drifting to the right place. Or you could just say, fuck it, press the buttons and see what happens. Hmm. Any convenient asteroid fields I can duck into? Uh, let's find out. I'm just going to roll some percentile dice and see what happens. Yeah, there happens to be a, um, a, uh, not a, not an asteroid field. But X column one one nine happens to have rings around it, and if you get around the rings, there's ice and debris around there that you can kind of use to dodge around while you make your assessments. <coughs> All right, uh, activate the intercom, guys. We've got say six or five bogies. Five. Yeah, we've got five bogies closing in fast. Well, looks like fighter jets. I'm going to see if I can duck around the rings to give us some cover. I'm coming to the bridge. I'll head to the bridge. I'll head to engineering. I'm gonna finish my wound my round of like watering plants real quick, and then I'm gonna like hurry over to the gunnery. Priorities. <laughs> Some of these things are delicate, man. So you guys go into the rings. Um, you could roll a stealth here, <clears throat> um, if you want to hide the ship while you're doing it, or you can go for like evasive maneuvers, which. Um, not really sure how we would roll that. Do you have a skill that you could think of? Probably piloting, now that I'm thinking about it. Good job, me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with piloting, because that's the thing I got all the ranks in. So. I'll be right back. Okay. I think someone's dying. Mm. It wasn't me this time. Sorry about that. Apparently my wife decided to choke on nothing. She's hmm. just over there gasping for air. That happens. Yeah. Uh, so, I got 28. What was the total? 28. 28. With well, the 28, you start weaving kind of in, in between these huge chunks of ice that make up the rings uh, and the gas that's kind of in between them. Or not gas, the, uh, the floating crystalline ice shards, because that's what rings are. Um... The fighter jets zoom past, and there's one that looks like a Starfinder ship um, that's been damaged pretty heavily. You can see, like, burn and scorch marks down the sides of it. Um, it's an exploration vessel. It has very little weapons on it, and you can see it's being chased by two Exian ships, or sorry, two Exian ships to start, and then there are another two behind them that are kind of going into a V-shape. Um, the two that are in the back are about to put on afterburners and circle around. You're enough of a skilled pilot to see what they're doing. Essentially, they're going to pincer in this uh, this this exploration ship. <coughs> hmm. Super unfortunate for that ship. Yeah. They're fellow Starfinders. Super unfortunate for that ship. Let me click the comms. <sighs> Hello. This is uh, Captain Soren of the good ship, the Spruce Goose. Hey, whoa. It has oh, we never agreed on that. 
<laughs> Damn it, I forgot. I came up with a name two weeks ago, but I forgot it. Ugh. Hey, man, I came up with a name and nobody disagrees with me, technically. Hey, we are the, we are the hey, we got names, Bruce Goose, deal with it. No, damn it, I remember what it was now. Uh, we'll, it, we'll pay somewhere later to fic, to change the name. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm okay with that. Like, uh, Taylor, like, thought the name, like, after, like, sitting in the bar for hours, comes back, Captain's spray painting Spruce Goose on the side. God damn it, no! <laughs> Guess I gotta get paint, I gotta figure out a good picture of a Groot Goose that's sprucing himself. He's <laughs> like, well, t- like, you just see Taylor glare at you when you say that. We're changing the name when we get back. Well, duh. And I look at Captain. So, um, kind of on, on a relay, you hear the chittering that the Exians speak to each other. It kind of sounds like, you know how when cameras get really, or microphones get really close to insects, you hear that it's that kind of yep. noise um, that mm. the Exians ships are transmitting to each other. And, um, you kind of thumb past them on the radio because I imagine your radio is like a CB radio or a CB yeah. radio. <laughs> no, I want to talk to the Exians. Oh, you want to talk to the Exians, not the Starfinder? Yeah. yeah, fuck the Starfinder. Okay, so um, you know that the reason that it's making that noise is because you haven't tuned into their signal quite yet. So you give it a couple of little like minor tweaks and then all of a sudden it, it breaks through and you hear um, stop your engines. Disarm your ship. You will be boarded. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, what's going on here? Why, why, why are you attacking my friend here? Your friend has been taken as a, as a uh, criminal to the Exian Empire. Um, you as a Starfinder know that the Exian's planet fell, became a dead planet, literally. There's a bunch of undead that run around on it that say that they're not attached to the Exian Empire, um, which is in the far space, which you guys are in right now, um, trying to basically take back control of all things and make all things undead. What was his crime? And is there a bounty? Uh... (laughs) I'm trying to determine their disposition here. Okay. Uh, his crimes include rhetoric. By the way, rhetoric. can I use can I use my new feat diversion to create a diversion? You absolutely can. <laughs> I will pull it up. Just let me know how that works. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. When you successfully use bluff to create a distraction, you can uh, use an ally and it's a stealth check to get away. Okay. So, so go ahead and give me a bluff. Um, he's going to go ahead and respond to you because it's it's part of who he is. Um, and your bluff will determine how on task he becomes. Uh your friend is wanted for rhetoric against the Empire. Crimes against his sovereign grace. And murder. I had a natural 20 on the bluff okay. check. Plus, uh, let's see, because you can't critically succeed on checks. Plus 7, 27. Okay. He goes, and murder. You are an accomplice. And, like, the ships start kind of, like, veering off course. Two of them start to break away. But this is your opportunity to move while they're already kind of past you. Because the two that are breaking away have to turn back at you guys. Hey, 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 I haven't committed murder yet. She can commit murder. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll That's take the it. Code <laughs> murder, comma, yet is the code word. I, was I imagine like a little control button in front of like Jigen's gun panel like lights up and all it is is like a little smiley face. <laughs> the smiley face is like a thumbs up. Yes, that will go. That will light up. All right. Uh, I'm going to target uh, the nearest vessel to the enemy ship. To or not the enemy ship. To, the, uh, to our, our friendly neighborhood other Starfinder ship. I see that shit coming across screen. No, no, they're attacking us. 
They're attacking both of us. Um, Fire. So you have two sets of weapons. You have the... Uh, <laughs> the... the um, da -da -da -da. Light laser cannons, and then you also have the high X missile launcher. Uh, the light laser cannons, I believe, you can actually hit multiple times. Let me just double check here. Isn't that the one on the turret, right? Yes. The light laser cannon is the is the forward facing. The missiles are the turret. Correct. Nope. It looks like the lasers are uh, once per round, and so are the high X missiles. You guys fired off a couple before, um, so let's actually give you a limit to your ammo. Um, okay. Let's say that there are eight. You guys used um, two of them during your fight with the, the giant bees in space. So there's six left. Okay. And there's That's an attack. a convenient I... area to refill on high X missiles around here. Damn. Mm -hmm. Um... Can I can I fire all weapons? I forget if I can fire all my weapons in one like gunnery action. I do not believe so. You'll have to alpha strike. The, you'll have to open up the rules and see if there is an alpha strike option. Uh, I'm looking forward, but for now, I'm just going to throw missiles at something. Okay. I need to die. Not unless they're linked, Nate. Okay, not unless so. If they're linked, then I can. But you, if they're not, then if no. you attempt you attempt a gunnery check for each weapon fired against a target, except for a linked weapon, which are resolved using one action for a single gunnery check. Okay. So that would tell me I'd use. I mean, I'm just going to use missiles for now. I'll, I'll read over it in a second. Okay. Um. <coughs> uh, 19 to hit. A 19 definitely hits. You blast off a round of missiles, and um, like three of them make contact with this first Exigen ship as it starts to wheel to the left to bring itself around. Um, you completely broadside it. Go ahead and do some damage. Twenty-one points of damage. Perfect. That's enough. The uh, the fighter. Po uh, the fighter ship uh, explodes in like classic 80s like sci-fi action where you could totally tell it was just a model with a stick of dynamite strapped to the side that the camera doesn't see. <laughs> the, uh, the second ship continues its path around to start to bring itself to you guys. Taylor, you've had an opportunity created for you to stealth out. No, that diversion only works for my allies. Oh, so it will work for the other ship. Okay. Yeah, normally, yeah. normally but, you you create a diversion for yourself uh, right. with but with the diversion feat that he's got. He's creating the for ship friends. Counts as you. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other ship has made its jump. Uh, it's it's actually showing to kind of break away. It dove through the rings, um, kind of using the same advantage you guys took. A bunch of ice like spreads out behind it as it punches through. You can tell it damaged the ship, but it's enough, like, kind of shrapneliness to throw off the other two, because the fighter fighters kind of dart in separate directions and open up space. Let's go ahead and do our piloting checks to figure out who goes first. Oh, sorry. Engineering goes first. Uh, I'm going to jump here as captain action. Okay. Captain Action, uh, I have a question for Chris. Chris, if I use the... or My question basically has to do with piloting, which is how many time, How long will it take Taylor to get out of here? Um, Taylor needs, let's see here, two, two rounds to figure it out. Um, and that's if he's mostly, di mostly not having to worry about like moving the ship away from threats and things like that. If you guys keep Taylor clear, it'll actually go faster. Okay. Uh, so my response is I look at Taylor and say, work fast, click over to engineering, make it look like we suffered major damage, and we're ready to surrender ourselves. Uh, I don't really just... Well, taking a... 
You really want me to make it look like we were hurt, sir? Yeah, but don't actually be hurt. I mean, let's... let's you know, a little plasma from the engines, a little, you know... Rocket explodes just before it leaves the gun cannon, and the gun cannon goes... Wah! That sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, the, the type of fuel that you guys use, um, you know that you could probably release that into space, and it'll just kind of float out there, and it'll look like you have... A burst fuel tank um, but knowing that you guys are having to make a jump through the drift you don't want to use too much of it so um, you could probably you could probably spare enough to be able to make the jump back to the uh, the space station but anything more than just just enough to try to convince them which will require a bluff check um, would All be right. detrimental to your mission but on the flip side, if you want to spill more, which could be detrimental to your mission, your bluff check will receive bonuses. Yes, bluff check. Because bonuses. it's not so much a bluff anymore. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, nah, nah, I have to get mad at me if we can't actually make it. Yeah, I'm gonna... I would get real mad if he has to stay here and fight. <laughs> So I am going to use. I'm actually. I'm going to do a bluff check. Just. I'm um, just doing just enough. Okay. So we'll say that this takes up the engineering phase. That's fine because I'll say there's no direct engineering. That yeah, I there's not a lot of a lot of little bullshit for like trying to escape combat using RP well, tactics. I I, I, I suppose no, that what it. Up. I suppose yeah. like you know it's it's. If they, I mean, most of the one those those direct ones are like you know guidelines, for, like lessons on how to play Starfinder. You probably found the wrong channel. No, <laughs> we're just they're playing. No, they can up, play it right, following the rules that we found so far and having a good time. I mean, isn't that the goal of any RP system though? Is to yeah. have a good time. Twenty-five bluff check, Chris. Twenty-five. Twenty-five with the twenty-five, you are able to bleed off enough of the fuel, and you watch your gauge and. It's, it's like an instant snap reaction. You flip the switch just at the right moment. Like the gauge drops down to about a quarter tank, and you know that that's the absolute minimum that you need to make your jump. Hopefully it doesn't screw you guys and make the jump longer than it needs to be. Captain, well, I did, got just enough. Killer did hear me say it. Uh, mm. Yeah. All right. I'll uh, flick on the comms. Hey, uh, ugly bug creatures. This is uh, Soren. Captain of the uh, Spruce Cube. <laughs> We're ready to talk terms. Please disengage your weapons. Uh, the smile goes off on Jenkins' thing. So, the. Uh, goes from a smiley face to a frowny face. Just, just to be the GM, Exians are the zombies, not the bugs. They just happen to have a weird radio. Eh, uh, bugs, zombies, bugs, zombies, right, whatever. My, my, my fault. No. Hey, uh, undead weird things. And same stuff. Captain, yeah, <laughs> Captain Soren thing. Uh, Captain Soren is, you know, Spruce Goose Captain. There, fuck off. We're ready to no talk. Engines. Talk. <laughs> okay. So you guys kill engines and give Taylor a chance. Taylor, I need a piloting check from you. Uh, I believe in you. Is hmm. that time for it? Uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, let's see here. With that in mind, I'm going to say for each uh, five over the target number that you made, uh, it's going to lower the amount of days to get to Absalon Station, which is good because you had 11 days worth of fuel. After the subtractions, you are actually just at 11. So you will be able to make the drift without yeah. falling out of space somewhere weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <good. laughs> Um, you've punched in the calculations uh, because everything kind of went steady you've got everything you need but you won't be able to punch out until the next round um, and pretty much the whole ship has to be primed and ready to enter the drift instantly um, you're doing it fairly close to the planet so it won't affect you guys <laughs> but That's all, all that matters nine, might get some drift problems well, oh, very well, well, well. odds. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Drift problems or drift solutions? 
Who knows? It depends on what files its way out of the drink. Exactly. Don't don't be so negative. Yep. Exactly. All right. I do have a statement before we leave. Uh, the weapons have been disengaged. Are you guys forsaking the weapons round? Upset, Jeez. but yes. Okay. Um, I did not interact with you guys because basically you are putting on that you're you're giving up. The Exians believe you because they are the great and glorious Exian Empire, and why would you fight back? Um, they close distance to you, and um, it's only three of them that are left. There's two that are kind of close to you. Or sorry, one that's kind of close to you. And the other two are wheeling around. Um, it's the start of the next turn. To be able to get the ship up and running, I do need a successful engineering check to put the engines at, like, full so that Taylor can do his piloting thing. All right. I'll do my engineering. Uh, I would like to encourage. Okay. The uh, the target for you is going to be an 18, so you guys can narrate it, your success or failure once you figure all that out. What does encourage do? Failure. Um... Encourage works like aid another, granting a plus two bonus uh, to the check required by a crew action if you succeed a DC 10 using the same skill. Okay. So what skill are you going to use to encourage? Uh, I don't know what skill he's using. Engineering. Engineering. Okay. Uh, skill I'm trying to use. Okay. So I'm going to encourage you uh, but you're using diplomacy because fuck you. I will fail if otherwise, which is my DC's 15 plus my starship tier. Diplomacy's literally one of our worst you were skills. Say a hey baby check, to be honest. <laughs> Diplomacy's one of our worst skills, man. No, I can make the diplomacy check. Yeah, he, he picks his own skills. And so okay. yeah. it narratively makes sense, and he makes the DC 10, oh. then he's okay. So my DC right now is a 22, which should beat the DC 15 plus starship tier. Um, if that is a success, Chris, then I will tell him, I will tell him, uh, my encourage, hey, uh, hey, nine, if you don't do this, we're all dead. No pressure, buddy. All right. <laughs> you get so plus you just two. gotta beat an 18 now. You have a two added to your die roll. That's a good thing I already had a plus 12 to engineering. <laughs> When I rolled a 19 on die. Be a four or better. <laughs> so, I, I am, uh, yeah. So, that's a uh, 33. Okay. Let's so, I, 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 just want, I just want to tell you how I reacted to this. He says, we're, if I don't do this, we're all going to die. So, I, uh, <clears throat> I, pu I put through this comms of the entire, of, of, of the entire ship. I will never let my friends die. And this is, but I'm also, but I'm also trying to transmit to the Ixi, the 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 undead Axians. <laughs> Fuck it! And I just like do my thing, and then go. And you you will see just like a huge boost. Yeah, there's I've... this uh, this kind of like mushroom buildup of energy at the engines, and then they plume out. The ship starts rocketing forward out of the star. Taylor, now's your chance. Um, all you have to do is say you engage, because you've already done your pilot. Well, time to burn sky till we see lines. Flip, flip, boop. On second thought, Exians, we decline to surrender. Have a good day. I put my seatbelt on. As like space rips open, you guys enter and uh, let's see. So Come our next path. Ah! All I'm hearing is that Chris. So our next Pathfinder game, we're gonna just randomly meet these weird Exians just showing up. <laughs> not sure what the go. fuck went on yeah a bunch of gigantic mushrooms come pouring out of their sentient mushrooms that are dying in space <laughs> <laughs> good thing their spores will live on that sounds terrible <laughs> oh god did we just create orcs <laughs> I hope so so, uh, 11 <coughs> days pass if you have downtime activities other than, like, gaining money and doing things for leveling. You can do so. I've, I've not looked at the downtime. I mean, unless on. you come up with a viable means to gain money. Because there are viable means to gain money on this downtime, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I, uh... 
I work as a uh, a remote consultant for burglary, <laughs> <laughs> offering advice to those who are just starting the business. I, I, I will I, cut that transmission real fucking quick as soon as I see that going on. I'm like, nope. Thank you for calling ADT. This is Kobe. <laughs> Captain, why don't you want us to make? Why don't you want us to make money? I'm just trying to help out where I can. I'm okay with us making money, but the less overtly illegal things we do, the better. You can only be an outlaw by living slightly outside the law. Anything more than that, and then you know, you act like I just randomly put up, you know, you know, things on, you know, normal message boards. I know what I'm doing. Listen, I don't care if you put up ads on Reddit or 4chan or whatever. No. Look, I didn't put up ads anywhere. It was all word of mouth. That's even worse. You trust the people we work with? I don't I don't tell anybody I work with I'm a burglar. Except for you, Captain. Uh exactly. Exactly. Now do me a favor and take this camcorder and take a picture of, or take video of Jigen showering. Sure. <laughs> I, I I go through the vents. Does this sound if you like need me, money? If you need yeah. me to roll stealth, let me know if you need me to roll stealth, because I will win. Uh, would Jigen care to pay attention while he's in the shower for people in their vents? Look, man, it's not as fun. For, you know, peep shows aren't as fun when they actually know. So I, even if he cares or not, the goal, the goal is that he doesn't here's know. The, here's the real question. Mm. Has this happened before? <laughs> Have well, obviously yes. Okay. Has G <laughs> Have I noticed it before? before? <laughs> I it hasn't happened. I would like to put that to dice. I'm gonna make a couple of perception checks and pretend that they're in the past. All right. <laughs> if I do well enough, <laughs> you, want, you, uh, you want me to roll myself? Say. No, no. Would require like, a used computer because you gotta find the right website. <laughs> I can I can do that if you want. I'm going to roll a couple of perception checks. I assume Taylor is editing, by the way. I don't think uh, Taylor would want a part of this. Taylor kind of the tape editing software. You <laughs> <laughs> disgusting meat bags and all your fluids. <laughs> I'm going to say like, that at some point in the past, I've noticed. Okay. Have you been on the lookout to make sure this doesn't happen again? I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> You've given up now. <laughs> I've given up. You got He's lucky once. You got, you got lucky He's a once. He's tenacious <laughs> rat. I tried to put stop. I tried to, to, to put measures up. But at this point, I just make sure the captain makes sure I get my cut. Yeah, I was just gonna. You just don't complain as long as there's money in your account. Okay. So the uh, the film has been made and posted to uh, to RedTube or whatever. Oh, uh, let's see here. Give me a performance check, G. Because <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you actually know what's going on. The ones that are the best are when you when you uh, you know jank it in the shower. I was gonna say, I feel like this is a there game may, that I never thought I'd be running. There may also be cameras to catch any women that come into the ship, but that's a totally different story. Website. There is also a really weird named thing that says "Hot Android on Coffee Maker Footage." <laughs> so there isn't a performance. <laughs> profession uh, porn star. I have profession soldier. So if you want me to like stand in the shower and flex, <laughs> I can do that. I mean, it depends. Is that part of your show? <laughs> uh, sure. That can be the show. He uh, seductively oh, rubs his scars. For you guys to get that, to get money, you have to roll a performance slash per, per profession during this period. <laughs> All right, I I got a twenty four. All right then. You guys are going to net an extra 400 credits. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. This, this what five of us or four of us? It's four of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So other than um, setting up an elaborate ring of Jigen videos online and hot Android on coffee maker videos, which surprisingly were the top top distributor of money. Mm. And I well, trying to get it. It's just like Taylor fixing the coffee maker. Like it's nothing. Oh like yeah. Too extreme. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's tough, but Android finds it hot, apparently. Yeah, it's like, you know, Android fixes copy, uh, copier machine. One video goes on YouTube, and then the other one is hot Android copier machine action, and that goes on RedTube. It's the exact same video, it's exact but it's the exact same video. Exact same video. <laughs> I'm curious, what would the equivalent of web site manager be for this profession? <laughs> I'm just going to put website manager under profession. <laughs> So, um, fun with Soren.com. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a post it note like next to my personal computer in my room as a list of websites I shouldn't go to. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, the ship breaks out of the drift, um, just outside okay. of Absalon Station, and, um, it, it's always kind of like that. This is the high budget moment of the show, but it's the same clip over and over every time you guys come to Absalon Station, where like you break out of reality and the same like three ships zoom into Absalon Station. It's definitely recycled footage. <laughs> and you guys move in and you go to a loading bay. And then, for anybody who's a super nerd of the show, you notice that the ship went to loading bay three, but when it cuts to you guys leaving the ship, you're clearly in loading bay five. We're going to have clearly. to bring that up at Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> Literally loading Bay 5. Yep, we're going to have to bring it up at the Comic Con panel. Mm. So, yeah. now you guys are exiting in loading Bay 5, clearly marked on the walls and everything. A, um, an android comes up. And, hold on, uh, hold on, because I feel like Soren is this kind of character. I feel like there's something wrong with this. And then continues walking. <laughs> you see, like, a little. Uh... Like director's commentary pop up. Yeah, this is part of an aborted arc where we're going to have like a series of uh, time shifts happening throughout the season. This would eventually come late in the season climax where we find out that the Undead Empire was manipulating time all along. Unfortunately, that ended up getting scrapped halfway through the season, so we had to shuffle around some scenes a bit. <laughs> so, a, um, Android comes up to Taylor and uh, he's got overalls on. And uh, on his overalls, it says Cletus. <laughs> so, uh, here, back from the uh, the Starfinder mission, huh? And he starts, like, checking some things off about your ship from the outside, like dents and scratches from going through the, uh, the ring. And he walks around the ship with you, Taylor, and um, he comes to the back of your ship, and there's this gigantic green spore on uh, your your retro thrusters that's just kind of lodged itself there. And he pulls out like his finger, and the tip of it opens up, and a little pin light comes on, like the little laser pointer. And he goes, what is that? Uh, drift spores. All right. Well, that's going to cost extra. The little tip flips back. Drift? Spores. That, that the tip perfect. flips back up, and you notice that it's a ballpoint pen, he, or sorry, a stylus, because he's using a tablet. Basically. And he writes down: spores requires hazmat. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what hazmat is there? Just blurring off the flamethrower. How much actually that cost? You want flamethrower, huh? And he writes it down. It's gonna uh, cost more. God damn it. So, like, you guys are, are leaving the, sh- the, uh, the ship, but you remember that the Starfinder Society said that they would pay for your damages. So you're like, yeah, sure, flamethrower it up, whatever. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> give give it the work. Leaving, you see, like, four dudes in hazmat suits with flamethrowers come in, and they're, <laughs> uh, three of them are Kobe's relatives, and then the other one is, is a rat folk that Kobe will say is his cousin, but he's never met him before in his life. 
can't prove shit. And like it kind of like on the Starfinder cover of the the rat folk with the flamethrower, like four of those dudes come in with like full masks and they just like burn your ship down pretty much from the outside. Uh, peel back paint and everything where it says Spruce Goose like peels away. <laughs> They're like, ah, we'll no. fix the paint too. Don't worry. And he puts it in his tablet. Just spudge. <laughs> do you guys have anything you want to do with Cletus and his cleaning <clears throat> crew before you go? Uh, Nothing. I will. Yes. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Taylor first, please. All right. Like, I will specify the new name of the ship. Uh inadvisably applied force that is terrible <laughs> i don't i don't like i don't think you should name the ships anymore taylor i like it he goes i a f got it <laughs> after the first two give the two piece i look back and then i look over at taylor like i like it taylor look back at the other two thank you like broad shit eating grin uh hey uh cletus is it it's cletus cletus yep. that's your name cletus yep Cletus, hey, I'm uh, I'm Soren, captain of the Harris IAF. <laughs> he extends a hand out to you that like rotates clockwise, and he goes, "Nice to meet you." I extend a hand out. And I'm like, I I don't know how you kids do it these days. I'm just gonna shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just like the whole time until you get to shake your hand, and then it like locks in mechanically, and then he shakes your hand properly. Yeah, Cletus. I need you to do me a favor. While you're cleaning things in here, and I'll slip them, uh, you know, a uh, hundred credits. Can you clean the IFF registry? He goes, well, according to my systems here, it doesn't look like you have one. We can install a new one if you like. And he, he holds out his palm a little bit longer for you. Give him his credits. Okay. <clears throat> this is not completely it's... unheard of for people in your line of business. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I assume. And then I'm gonna go. Oh, by the way, I did notice a problem with our enhanced sensor suite. We got it just before we left. The the, uh, the Starfinder said they were gonna you know show the cost to fix it, but for some reason it just seemed to work like our old one. If you catch my meaning. So, what's your package are you trying to get in? Because <laughs> there's a kind uh, of advanced one. You have budget. There's also basic, which is just above budget. And then there's advanced. Advanced. Okay. Advanced, short, medium, or long. Uh, what are the differences, if you don't mind me asking? The range that they can go. You have budget medium right now. Oh. Uh, go to advanced medium. Let me take a look at the cost difference here. Uh, yeah, he'll build that. He'll build that? He'll, he'll uh... He'll, he'll fix it. it. He'll build it to the Starfinder's Guild. Yeah, there was, I mean... He'll get back to you, but... That's another day's problem. <laughs> I mean, obviously, as I'm talking with Cletus, I'm like... Obviously, there's a problem with this. We had someone put this in before we left, but... It just didn't work the way it was it was built to. Can you make sure it was fixed, please? And I good job, Cletus. Taylor, uh we should go. He um Let me just take a look. Okay, he can't build it. I'm sorry. I'm looking at your build points here. Your ship won't actually support it without uh. like completely ripping and gutting out a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, which he'll do if you want, but he's gonna no. Talk about, I he's going to talk to you about custom ship options because obviously it doesn't meet your current needs. No, I'm just having having Cletus put in something that is better to have at a at a at a free cost. Um, to us, he could put in something that's better. Which would be the uh, the budget, or he could go to like basic mid range. Let me just double check that math real quick here. Never mind about that.
Yeah, but budget mid range becomes the next best option. You mean basic uh, mid range? Or sorry, but budget mid range or basic mid range mid range becomes the next best option as far as points are concerned. But he's gonna have to pull two points of stuff off of your ship to make it happen, which means the botany lab plus something else, or two points off of like thrusters, or ah, take don't worry away about all that. your defenses. When he goes, when I get the the idea of something is you know basically that's impossible to get through. Yeah, type that's of why thing. I said he's gonna start talking to you about. Uh, I'll options. give him that. Eh, don't worry about it then. Yeah, yeah. Cletus will begin talking to you about custom ship options. Um, Did I drop the call? No, I'm still here. You're good. You're good. Yeah. You good now? Yes. Okay. Cletus will um, start talking to you about ship options, um, like building one yourselves. Um, he's he said that um, as Starfinders, he can give you fair trade for your your current ship to get you into something newer um you guys happen to be in a cletus it's a pretty good size for what you do cletus cletus i'm sure you can interface with my man taylor over there my bot taylor over there Droid. i'm gonna call him an apple taylor who made you hmm I was made by the Free Combine on Sagittarius 3. Fruity Combine. My fruit over there. Ugh. Or you can talk to the little nine <laughs> rat folk that follow me around everywhere. I'm going to talk to I I'm, I'm talking with my family, so you don't, you don't see me. No, I said the nine rat folk that follow me everywhere. I don't know which one you are. <laughs> I assume you're scuttling around somewhere. And I just want this guy off my back. Okay. Um, let me just double check here. He's trying to be helpful, and I don't care. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Taylor, he's offering you a steal. Um, he can get you another Explorer class. It'll be a slight upgrade from what you have. Um, basically taking you from a Tier 1 ship to a Tier 2 ship, which means you have 20 points of building to, expend, to spend. Mm. Um, on upgrades from what your current ship is. Basically, he has a tier two frame that um, it, it needs a little repair work. You guys could transfer over some of your systems and save some of the cost. That's how he kind of spins it for you. Um, and he tells you that um, it'll run you guys, uh, let's see here, five grand in credits to do the upgrade. If you want to upgrade your systems beyond that, it will be more expensive. But just for the for the <coughs> for the frame upgrade, essentially, it's going to be more grand. <coughs> yeah, right. Sure. Okay. Right. I'd appreciate it if you guys would also help pitch in a bit. Uh, I show you the videos. They're like, we have been pitching it. In. <laughs> Did you fixing the engines at one point for some reason? And it's labeled as hot Android on engine sex. <laughs> like, oh, please. That's not what Android sex looks like. Never Here to show me? It. Never elaborate. <laughs> what does Android sex look like? I get the camera. <laughs> it is leagues beyond your flesh or organic sex. So explain it. No, it is beyond your puny meat brain to comprehend. Oh. Okay. I am sending you a file for the uh, the ship. Essentially, when we went to page two, it's the builder section. I basically bumped you up to tier two, which gives you twenty points extra, and you can fiddle with things and tell me what you finally come up with and I'll tell you what the final price is. Okay. Basically just tell me what things you changed in the end. Alright. If my message wants to send. There it goes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah loaded. Alright. I'll be fiddling with things, so carry on. Okay. 
So um, you know that to collect the rest of your money, you're going to have to go to the Starfinders Guild. Yep. Or you could just avoid those guys. You know, whatever. Nope. All right. I'm going to ask for a bonus. We're not afraid of the afraid of them. Okay. So you head to the Starfinders Guild, and I think that, um, like, as you guys like walk out of the uh, the hangar or the uh, the the star bay there, what's going to end up happening is, is a jump cut to the scene of you guys inside the Starfinder office. I assume Soren's behind uh, Captain Ironjaw's desk again, <coughs> or Iron Tooth, yeah. or whatever I called him before. Yeah, I press the button and page him. You page his secretary to have him brought to his office? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we talked about the secretary last time uh, being in the uh, the Ixie and the... Uh, or not Ixie and the... Um, the insectoid. Sharon. 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 Yeah, the Sharon. And um, she kind of like coos when you call for her to give, give Captain Irontooth the message. Um, but the intercom cuts off at the end there. It's like this chittery sound. Um, and then Iron Tooth comes in and sees Soren behind his desk. Who else is with you, Soren? I assume Jigen is with me. I am there as well, but I have rolled a stealth check because I, I don't want to be seen. Whenever <laughs> I go to collect, I always like to have Jigen with me because I don't want to get skipped out on. I'm like going over with um, oh, the rat. Uh, I'm like looking at eBay to how much we can get for this for this Dogeco. <laughs> trying to find out if the guy that we got it off of was like notorious or anything. So I'm not so, trying to sell it just as a basic one. I assume that you're using Toothy's no, no, no. computer then. I'm I'm looking to hawk this thing. I don't fucking want. Yeah, it. it's a, it's a pretty basic Dogeco. You could sell it for about seventy five percent of what the book value is. Um, just because those Dogecos come are are pretty standard. Okay. <clears throat> he didn't leave any markings or anything on it. No. Dang. All right. I'll 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 be disappointed. But like, I mean, all right. They're like scars of battle, but they're it, it's obviously used, but it, it, nothing like in, nothing like fancy engraving or anything like that. All right. That's what I'm going to be doing afterwards. Then. It was Iron Tooth because you called him Toothy. It is. It's Toothy. Yeah. Toothy, baby. Long time no see. Did you miss me? Say you missed me. Soren. I take it the mission went well then. And he sits on the opposite side, which has become a custom now. Yeah. I go, of course it did. And in fact, you owe me a bonus. And what makes you say that? Toss him a, a chip of our sensor logs. One of our other Starfinders was getting in some, uh, some trouble with the undead there. Ixians, and he kind of like takes the chip and he inserts it into the side of his little data slate thing and um he's pulling over your logs here and he sees like the gunfire and stuff like that and the target lock and the ship that was registered looks like unknown Ixian craft fighter pilots there must be a bigger ship in the area yeah I'd suggest we avoid it for the time being that is, unless you give me a whole lot of money. He uh, kind of grumbles to himself, and he says, well, if the Exians are in system, I can't leave leave that planet of, of colonists there. It's mostly scientists. I mean, yeah, drug addict. <laughs> but uh, drug addicts is what they are. I suppose that will make more sense when I see your report. Oh, oh, hold on. Okay. You hand him the report. He um, he takes the chip, and this one, instead of sliding, sliding it into his data slate, he's got, like, this port that's embedded on his neck. Um, it's, like, his first step to becoming a, uh, a cyborg or, or a synthetic gear. And he sticks yeah. it in. And you see, like, data lines go across his eyes. And he goes, I see. Ah, uh, that's gross. It's more efficient. Yeah, yeah. If you're into, like, androids screwing around with engines, man. He, uh, he just looks a little confused at you with that comment. 
<clears throat> I see. So there was an Exian on the planet as well, in charge of the. Uh, and he kind of like is is processing data. Cult. Is that really how you phrased it? Cult. Yeah. Were I mean, worshiping something, or were they just high on magic? It's a little both. Different. It was a little of both. There was some hero worship going on. Hero worship. I mean, I can't help what I instill in others. <coughs> I mean, Toothy, watch this. Hey, girl, you free tonight? And I, I you know, I just buzz a secretary. <laughs> she, uh, she like holds back another chitter, and she says, <laughs> um, "Yes, Soren. What can I help with?" I, I think I need a companion to go to the bar with later tonight. Of course. And I, uh, yes. And I yes. smile and I give I give Toothy a wink. He just shakes Oops. his head. Um, and he reaches over and he cuts the the intercom off as she just like sputters out a couple yeses. I don't care what you do on your free time, but don't bring that back to this office. <laughs> don't bring her back? I intend to bring her back to my ship? You don't know how pissed off Taylor will be. He is not a fan of organic mucuses. Have you ever been with a Sheeran? He really won't nope. be a fan. Oh, I have. He hasn't. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lean over to uh to to Kobe and whisper for him to move the cameras tonight. <laughs> you lean over to like one of the office plants and whisper at it. <laughs> I'm not that's, there. That's two DCs. I'm not there. For the record, I plan on moving the cameras myself. <laughs> I plan on having there more than one camera. He, exactly. Um, you need. He assesses the files and. Uh, he, he goes, your assistance in um, rescuing the Endeavor is appreciated. Oh, oh those God, pricks. Geez. It's one of those. It's like the Starfinder yeah. altruistic ships. <laughs> one of those pricks. Jeez, I should have let them have it. Well, they weren't willing to pay a bounty, so I guess you're welcome. He, um... He says, as member of the Starfinder Guild, you will be rewarded, of course. And uh, he <clears throat> sends over some credits to you in a in a file. Uh, it's an extra thousand and bonus for uh, providing assistance. As far as going back to Xcall one one nine, if there are fighter ships in the area, then there's definitely at least a destroyer. Maybe something bigger. If you can investigate and report back uh, via buoy or transit. I mean, I'm sure we can find the destroyer, and I'm sure we can deal with it if money's good enough. But if you just want an investigation, who am I to say no? He goes, if it's a destroyer and you choose to engage, should you live through the, uh, the process, then yes, there'll be a bonus in it for you. And he kind of <coughs> tabulates some funds and he says, um, a destroyer is quite a bit to, to take on yourselves. I'll give you, and he kind of looks over his funds real quick and he mum mutters to himself about Abadar, Abadar Corp, Corp, rather. And um, I can give you give you ten thousand credits. I can't go any higher. <coughs> there will be no negotiation on this one. Abadar Corp has my balls in a sling right now. Toothy, toothy. We all we both know Vesks don't have balls. All right, buddy. Don't get smart with me. Listen, if you want a destroyer dead for anything less than 20 grand, 
You're barking up the wrong tree, my friend. We'll investigate it for you. But I'm not destroying it for anything less than 20 grand, like I said. The destroyer's not much bigger than your ship. Yeah, but I can't take it out in a space combat. I have to board it. Means I have to get captured. Means that I have to get my crew captured. Now, you know that Jigen doesn't like getting captured. And the last time he did kill six guards. Makes it a little bit more difficult to smuggle in the explosives needed. They found like, six guards. I like how you go, the last time it didn't go so well. And then, like, I imagine there's, like, this this jump cut, and it shows Jigen with, like, muzzle flare flashes and, like, just smoke everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, green blood all over his face. And then it cuts back to the office with Jigen, like, twitching for just a second. <laughs> you already found six. Again, 5,000 credits for Jigen getting locked up. It's a pretty good deal. I'll say, you know what? We'll we'll keep the corp in your in your we'll keep your balls in mind and intact and in fact I'll even give you my date with your secretary. Ten grand is acceptable, but ten grand for each of us. You know my finances weren't as restricted as they were. You both you and I both know that that's too much. Like I said, twenty grand was my start off point. The more you deny We can always find someone else. I think we're done here. And he gets up and walks behind you inside his chair, and he starts picking it up to dump you out. <laughs> I'll stand up and go, Toothy. You're making a mistake here, buddy. You want us to just go find the destroyer, not take it out? Okay. Do you have a tracker yeah. you want planted on it? You just want its current location when we find it? He goes, no, I don't need anything further from you. Go ahead and find yourself some other work for now. So you don't want us to go after this destroyer? No, I have a certain budget, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you respect it much. I can only do what or, I'm allowed to do. I respect your budget. What I don't respect is your corporate overlords trying to take my balls in a vice with yours. No offense, if my balls touch your balls, that makes us both gay. You know what I mean? They can't touch. We're not in a three-way. So, with that being said, Toothy, how much did you have in mind for just finding the destroyer? Finding and planting a beacon. This would be five grand. Taking it out with your 10. It's my final five offer. Grand. 10 grand for taking it out. How about this? Toothy, I'll take 5 grand. You'll provide the beacon. Because, Jigen, we don't have a beacon, right? We. I think I shot the last one. <laughs> yeah. You provide the beacon. And if altruism strikes for some reason, we decide to take it out, well... We'll talk about it then. I don't like hard and fast numbers with stuff like that. He um, he kind of locks in and he, he just shakes his head and he says, get out of my office. With that in mind, the conversation does bring up some of the other people that you can contact for more profitable jobs. Like, say, Abcorp, who's the most profitable company slash temple inside the uh, absolute day. I have to go help Steph out. Uh, I will pass this off to Jigen, finding us a job. I, I tell him that I've got to go get ready for my date, Jigen. <coughs> you, uh, why don't you handle this? Uh, it's also the shit patch you on the back. I think Jigen is a captain. mercenary, right? Uh, soldier, so, I mean, he's, he dabbles. So, I mean, you can hey. always find a job doing that sort of shenanigans. Oh, yeah, I, I, nobody else likes that kind of stuff, though. Kobe hates it. Taylor, like, morally opposed to it, and Soaring will, will, you know, come down sick. <laughs> not be able to go. And I'll be stuck there, basically alone, doing four people's work again, like usual. 
flashback well, to the same scene you covered in Alien <laughs> Punch an airlock, three people fly out of a ship. <laughs> okay. So, uh, right. let's let's go over to Taylor. Taylor have made uh changes to the ship that you you're interested in. Uh yep, a couple. Okay. Uh few basic upgrades, added an extra turret, and I added a tech lab. Okay, you said a few basic upgrades. What does that include? Alright. Uh, I cranked sensors up to advanced medium range. Okay. The computer is now a Mark I Duo node. Uh, armor. Shields are now light shields 50. And defense countermeasures are Mark II defenses. You said advanced medium for your range? Yep. Okay. Got it. I just need to adjust so that I know what the, uh, the differences in your ship are. Okay. Um, uh. Yeah, it's going to come back, and uh, it's a little more expensive than you were originally thinking. Um, the 5000 basically got you the frame. Once Cletus gets back to you with hard numbers, he's asking for another 8000 Ugh. And uh, after he sends you his, his invoice, he goes, let me know if there's anything else I can do to assist you with this project. Hmm. You know, you know that Cletus has a reputation, and uh, Spaceport Number Five has a reputation for doing some underhanded and shady things. Hmm. Right. So is that eight thousand on top of the five thousand? Correct. Okay. So a total of thirteen thousand. Uh. So I'm gonna contact the other guys. It's like. So, got back the number from Cletus. Uh, I'm gonna need an extra thousand credits to make this happen. What? Like, I got that kind of money. You know, I have a family to feed. You ain't you're not dealing with the captain right now. You're dealing with me. <laughs> what the hell happened? Well, I mean, he gave me this sheet and told me all the nice things I could add to our new ship, so I added a bunch of nice things. And turns out, nice things are really expensive. How so... old are you again? Seven. Seven? We're going to have to fix that. Uh, I, oh, unless you have a time machine, I don't see how it's going to work. I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but we're going to make you a reasonable person. We're going to make you into an adult. We're going to turn you into an adult. No, we're going to turn me into a spaceship. Upload puberty right. 2.0. <laughs> All right. All right, I know what I'm doing. Time to go get Taylor traumatized. <laughs> while while Jigen is doing that, apparently now I'm left to go look for a job. Oh, no, I'm looking for a job. Nope. You said you're going to get him traumatized. Yeah, and we're going to get paid. No, okay. come back with different That's jobs okay. or I'm not going to be satisfied. We'll find jobs and then compare and see which one's the best one to do. <laughs> yep. Okay, it works. I am going to use my vast network of uh, family to help to look for jobs. Okay. Because that's what they're there for. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you... Do you speak I'm gonna to ask, the reputable I'm... folk in your family or do you talk to those shady ones that most people don't talk to? <laughs> uh, I know what, I know what the captain wouldn't have a problem with looking with looking at the shady stuff. So you, care, really you might trust... be considered one of those shady folks yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't realize this. But last time I talked to cousin Fred, he he said he was a good guy and you know, I really can't call him out, you know, for being a bad guy just cuz everybody else hates him. I'm going to go talk to cousin Fred. You don't we need to a... double cross Fred, your cousin from your mother's third, third. Uh, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa! No, 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 no! I mean, single cross Fred. <laughs> ah. 
from, you know, my sister's cousin's brother. Got it. Father. I will tell you his job in a second. Gene, where are you going to go look? Uh, there are, like, mercenary bounty boards and shit like that that you could go find. No, uh, I'll roll a profession if I have to. I'm going to go find, like, one of my old Black Ops uh, buddies okay. from so you're back in the like day. So legit job. Okay. Yeah, well, no. Uh, Oh, well, he said black ops. He didn't say legit. Yeah, I'm specifically looking for, like, anything to do with android slavery, where we have to go through, like, a compound full of, like, messed up and plugged in and crazed androids. Okay. Um, Who did you used to do black ops for? Because it definitely wasn't the Starfinder. They didn't have enough money for that. No. Um, I don't know the organizations as well. Is there a... If you want. <clears throat> the people uh, that I can I'm... think of off the top of my head would be any of the Night Orders, so the Glaring Knights, the Hell Knights. Um, I would also say that Abadar Corp probably has a Black Ops unit or two, because they're uh, the I... most filthy rich company out of all of them. <laughs> I'm going to say that uh, that there is a a mercenary company on out of um, Absalom Station that fancies itself a paramilitary and security force, but really they're basically just a bunch of thugs. Okay. I was going to say, there um, is actually like a Android Liberation Front as well, but they don't mm. have the kind of money that you'd probably want. Chris, what yeah, about the no. Free Captains? Uh, yes, there is the Free Captains. A bunch of scurvy space they're, pirates. They're, they're, they're space pirates, Nate. You could, be, you could be formerly a space pirate. You know what? Yeah, we're going to go with that. All right. Of course Nate wants to be a space pirate. So, uh, tell me about your contact. Who, who, who is the person that you go to meet, and uh, how is he obviously a space <coughs> pirate? Because I feel like space pirates can't hide who they really are. No. No, no, no. Um, his name is Jeb. J E B. Okay. Jeb is. Hmm. Is he just a pirate, or is he like high ranking? Um, he's like I guess officer equivalent well, ranking. I guess a but... marine, since he's a, a black ops guy. Yeah, I mean he's uh he's slight. Well, he was officer equivalency, uh, but he he's Kasatha, the. The short and stout. Is that are they the ones that have short ones? No, they don't. No, no he's like uh, 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 a Yep. <clears throat> no, he's a Kasatha. He could also and, but, just be an elf or dwarf if you want. They they do exist. Nah, uh, he only has right arms. Okay. And that is why he is no longer <laughs> a field operative. Hmm. He actually only has right arms, and his left eye is eye patched. Okay, I dig it. That's enough for him to be identified, plus, like, colorful wardrobe. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, people take care around him not to use the word left. <laughs> does he also take care not to use the word left? Uh, yes, he does. He tr- he actively tries not to. Okay. He'll, like, he'll catch himself if he does. Is he also an Ambi turner It's... It's... <laughs> It's not that it makes him like upset or like he flies into a rage. He's just so tired of it, and he like considers it a little bit insulting that anyone would think that the joke hasn't been made yet. Okay, mm-hmm. so you come into the bar where Jeb and a, a couple other space pirates are, and Jeb's his arms like slammed at the table, and somebody turned off their camera. That would be Murdoch. Oh God! <laughs> It'll fix itself once the camera comes back on. So, the um, Jeb slams his fist down on the table, and he goes, You guys just abandoned me on that space station. Where I come from, you don't leave a man behind. You just let abandon me on that station. <laughs> I'm going to go over to the bar and uh, grab two of whatever he likes to drink. Okay. 
As you get closer, you realize that he has like two serrated combat knives and his two good arms, and he's like holding the table at knife point at the moment. Hmm. Uh, who's he sitting with? Uh, it's it's a couple of humans and uh, another Lashanta uh, that are at this table where that he's kind of venting his anger on. You don't recognize them. They must be kind of green. Uh, so none of them they're seem young. to have any but like actual injuries, and none of them seem seasoned enough that they're that good. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna walk up to the table with the two drinks, and I'm kind of like eye both sides of the table, and uh, and I'll just say Jeb, and I'll hand him a drink. He goes, "What?" and he slices the throat of the first human. The whole bar just kind of looks over, and then they go back to their drinks. Because you're in a pirate bar, and who cares? Yeah. Hmm. The uh, the I'll second let... human, like, screams the one that's closest to him. And the third one, like, clamps its ha hand over the second human. Um, it's a couple of males. And the, the Lashunta is just staring hard at Jeb. And Jeb doesn't break the, uh, the look, and he goes, Jigen, is that you? I'd shake your hand, but I'm a little busy right now. And he, like, holds his knives to them again. <laughs> like, the uh, human flinch and the Lashenta <laughs> that's across the table, like, sits stalwartly. Aye, right, sir. It is. Uh, I'll, like, sidestep a little bit as the dead human, like, falls off of the, t off the couch. Kind of, like, push him off to the side. Mm -hmm. Like, like on the and floor. sit in the pool of blood where he was? No, no. Uh, I'm gonna turn to Jeb, and uh, I uh, I have a little bit of business I'd like to discuss with you. If you wouldn't mind letting these two off a little easy today. He uh, he puts a knife on the table and he goes, "All right, if you cut off your own finger, you're forgiven." <laughs> and like the the human that screamed grabs Thanks. the knife, cuts his damn pinky off, and he goes, "I wasn't, I didn't fucking mean it." Get out of here. <laughs> I'll laugh at like the when he cuts his finger off. I'll make sure like I'll grab him by the shoulder and I'll make sure he remembers his finger. I'll give him like a shitty street dock nearby, like tell him to reattach it. Yeah, he's gonna get like a cybernetic finger that like bends the wrong direction because he doesn't have any <laughs> money. <laughs> uh, I'll, so I'll so the table empties out, and um, you find a non-bloodied seat to sit in. Yeah. The the other Lashunta like keeps eyeballing Jeb on the way out, and uh, Jeb sits down in the pool pool of blood on the other side. I don't make them like they used to. Nah. Back when you started, Jigen, any one of the Greenhorns with you. Would have just told me to fuck off when I told them to cut their fingers off. They're all scared <laughs> nowadays. <coughs> uh, it's because all, all the old green ones have made a name for themselves. What can I do for you? I, uh, I'll take a sip of the drink. I have a friend. Not like, quote, friend. and Like, he's a friend. Who wasted a whole lot of my money. So, I'm looking to do two things. Looking to make that money back. Looking to make him pay. He's an android. I was wondering if you had... If you knew of any uh, paying work around here. That might scare him up a little bit. <laughs> he uh, kind of looks around the room and he goes I'm not telling you what to do Jigen but android slavery is illegal on Absalon Station no 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 like I said he's a friend he's, he's a good guy he's oh, just an idiot okay I thought you were just going to dump him off for a little while a few nah, years might nah, do him nah, some nah. good he starts laughing and he takes a swig of his drink <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then, what exactly did you have in mind? 
just a shit job that pays well or something specific? You know what? I kind of miss the shit. Give me some shit that pays well. He, uh, he goes, okay, and he pulls out paper, which is, like, stupid hard to find. Um, the paper that he has, it's it's called crinkle paper. It's a thing that, like, the free, free captains use. It gives them the fanciness of having paper, but essentially it's like an Etch-A-Sketch. You crinkle it up, and then you unfold it, and it's, like, everything that was on it is gone. Hmm. That's cool. He um, smooths them out and makes sure that they don't get all crumpled up from his jacket so that none of the words get dis- disappear off the paper. And um, he goes, yeah, there's um, there's two jobs that immediately spring to mind. There's an assassin that's been working here on the Absalon Station. I call him the Midnight Dancer. Fruity name. But if you take him out, there's a big wig at Absalon Corp that uh, is willing to pay 15,000 credits for him. Being an assassin and being a good one, he's killed the last 13 people that have tried. So I don't think it's going to be all that worth it. If you just want something horrific and bad, well, there's rumor that over on <laughs> X-Colony 119, spores came out of the drift. <laughs> By the time you get back there, they'll be ready to harvest. And there's a couple mages that'd be willing to pay quite a bit for some of those spores. You don't say... That'll mutter something about him burning credits off of our ship. <laughs> he um, he kind of pages through some more documents, <clears throat> and then he goes, oh, "This might be interesting." And He's gonna he put the fear of God into him. And he opens it up and he says, um, "This one's been floating around for a while. It's um, it's kind of a wild goose chase, if you ask me." There's an old ship that's uh, at these coordinates, and he, he just points to them. Uh, rumor says that it's full of uh, unknown treasures. Now, there's nobody paying anybody to explore it, but if you listen to the other captains, then uh, there's a good chance that this will be worth the, the excursion out there. I can't say how much it'll make, and people say the ship's cursed but we've come across cursed ships before. We've lived. Flashback to you covered in gore again. <laughs> I'll snap back to reality. Make sure the gravity stays on. I'll take it. Sounds like fun. So you're going to take the, uh, the ghost ship option? Oh. Okay. So how many pe- how many people have tried? Uh, for the ghost ship, it's been around forever. You know that like <coughs> a lot of people have tried, but they either get scared off or they don't get anywhere with the ghost ship. Um, some people say that like the whole thing is empty, that there's nothing there. Other people say that they saw the treasures, but they couldn't get to it. There's a whole lot of weird rumors around it. It's it's hard to make heads or tails out of anything. Mm. Cody, you uh, you find what was it? Uh, single crossing single, Fred. Single cross Fred. Yep. Single cross Fred goes. Yeah. There's um. There's this guy that some associates of mine would like taken care of. His name is Darkstar. He's a halfling. One of the the short humans. Mm. He's been bothering ah. the syndicate and, excuse me, the organization, and they'd <sighs> like him taken care of. 
yeah. So uh, I never heard of Dark Star. Is he new around? No, he's he's been around, and uh, yeah. Fred will like hold out a data slate, and he puts out like these reports of like these legitimate businesses because he's edited the articles <laughs> <laughs> uh being like burned down like there's there's something about like a like a chemistry lab that blew up because of dark star uh there's another thing that talks about like a um a commercial trading business that was taken out <laughs> like it's very creative and unfortunately your character is naive so you don't see through the elaborate illusions elaborate illusions. I'm not that naive. He just happens to be family, so... Yeah. I have no reason... I shouldn't... I have no reason the, to the doubt him. The can clearly see that, like, the laboratory is, like, a drug lab. The, uh, the commercial trading caravan is, uh, like, a slave ring. Like, <laughs> there's no denying it. There's definitely, like, a picture of a bunch of androids that have been shackled together in one of them. And then there's, like, this picture of this character who's got, like, a helmet on. It's got, like, the star on his forehead. His, his like, space suit is, like, kind of molded after armor. And he's got two pistols. And he's always, like, posing. It looks like he could be Soren's best friend. Uh, <laughs> and he's got, like, a dark visor that covers his face. You're making me some too big villain going after a superhero. <laughs> Please let it be a moonlighting Soren. Oh my god. Um, it is definitely not a moonlighting Soren. <laughs> that we know of. Uh, Don't so it could be one of Soren's brothers. Three. Did, so, <laughs> did you, so you're saying you want me to like, you know, make him not available? I mean, if you could just capture him and bring him to the proper authorities, the organization would be exceptionally happy with you just drop him off at this warehouse and he gives you like this very clearly shady end of town warehouse address yes i'm like hmm i've been there before that's a proper part of town you know what fred whoa whoa hold on hold on i've, I've got to ask i've got to ask because I'm not used to, you know, doing this up front. I'm used to selling off whatever whatever my job is. How much does this pay? He goes, oh, pay. It's it's a steal. Let me tell you. You just have to make sure that you get him in to the station quietly. You see, the syndicate doesn't want to scare the people of the station with, by knowing that he's here. But they're willing to pay 20,000 credits if you if you retrieve him. Hmm. You know what? If he's causing this much terror around the city, I mean, I'm not the nicest guy myself, but come on. I can't, you know, there's there's people out there who do like me, and I and I understand this, and I can't have him hurt them. You got a deal. He, uh, he nods. He goes, good, good. I'll be sure to let the syndicate know. And uh, he kind of scurries off down a tunnel way. This is probably the best conversation you've had with, you know, cousin, uncle, Fred. I still can't figure out which one he is. I know he's some kind of family. All right. I feel like I've indirectly caused a lot of bad decisions. Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> Taylor, do you wish to seek another job? Because... Cletus inadvertently but, kind of invited you in to find other ways to pay for your... But you don't know this yet, so come on, add on to the craziness. You know what? I will, so because I feel like that's the way the episode is going. The <laughs> like, hmm. yes. of causality compels me to take this shady job. Oh god, you're going to get captured. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. Cleese tells you that there is a, uh, a planet where uh, androids have taken possession of the planet. Uh, it's in the, in the far space region. 
um, but they've started creating their own like android like bioforms so things that were natural to this planet they've started androiding them um, and he's See. really interested in this uh, this thing that um, is is best known as a uh, an andro worm it's essentially like a giant worm that's been androided he wants huh. samples and uh, pieces of like it's it's motherboard to anal or sorry it's full motherboard to analyze and like genetic sampling hmm interesting interesting these things aren't sapient are they T is an android. Um, they are because of the android modifications. Uh, hey. He goes, okay. Oh, okay. It's, not, it's not entirely true. Like, if they shoot me first, then yes, I can kill them. <laughs> That's the problem. See, they're intelligent but they're still just as predatory as they once were. I don't know why they decided it was a good idea to put uh, android modifications on a gigantic worm that regularly eats people, but that was their choice. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Well, in that case, then they're probably evil. In which case, it's okay to kill them again. Uh, and so long as I scream, it's coming right at me before I shoot it. It's probably fine. Okay. <laughs> So uh, you guys have a, a series of, of plot hooks to take advantage of. All I have to say is one thing, Chris. Captain, never leave us to our own vices again. <laughs> <laughs> so the captain came in halfway through that. So let's just go to like the conference room where you're all explaining what missions you found to the captain. Um, <laughs> is there a Shireen on my lap? Is the... Uh... The secretary. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, she she's already been taken care of, I think, in the in the interim. Yeah. Like as they approach the ship, to... she's leaving. No, she needs to be on my lap during the conversation. If that's the case, I'm not having a conversation. <laughs> I will not have a conversation with the captain Fine. while she is in entertaining. Fine, she can I... be leaving. <clears throat> she can be leaving the ship. Goes with the one I wanted to go with. Hmm. You know you wanted to go with mine. Dark star. <laughs> Don't worry, Chris. I'll do my best. You guys interrupted my uh, date. This better be good. Captain, I got us a job. It co it's gonna pay a lot of money. It's like I got. It's good. I got my cousin Fred. He, Uncle Fred. He's. Jigan, what did you get us? I a glance over, I glance over at uh at Taylor and kind of smile a little bit. Found us a ghost ship full of treasure, and old technology. Hmm. That does sound interesting. But how did you find a ghost ship? Oh, it's a legend. How many people know where it is? But I got a hold of the coordinates. Hmm. Uh, there's just gonna be a trap there, or isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Duh, but also tons of cool stuff. The ship is yeah. called Quietus, and you all know the legends of it. It it does exist. It floats around space. <laughs> Through some way or another, it enters and exits the drift. So tracking it is hard. Hmm. <clears throat> ooh, ooh, can I can I can I go next, Captain? Can I can I go next? I want to go next. I got something to say. I got something to say, to Captain. What do you... I didn't ask you to find a job. <laughs> yeah, but Captain, nobody else was looking for a job at the time, so I went to go look at my own, because you know, I didn't know people, Captain. So I Gene went to go... Gene got us a job. He said he was going to do other stuff. He didn't say anything about finding a job. And plus, who knows if that job pays better than my job. My job actually also helps the people in Absalom Station. We don't even have to go travel anywhere for this. We have to just go find someone and get them. On Absalom Station. Yes. He's a terrorist. <laughs> He's attacking our fans. What Your uncle cousin you... Fred told you he was a terrorist. What proof yeah. do you have that he's a terrorist? 
<laughs> just give me a second for all the falsified like of poorly of course i articles. do <laughs> of course i do <laughs> why wouldn't i this is all the proof i needed i smile and hand it to jigen so so i i bring taylor over here this is actually kind of funny so let's see if i can get all these i'll like i'll hand him one at a time be like photoshop photoshop ms paint Image editor, Photoshop, well, of course, MS people Paint, are gonna lie, MS make Paint. him, you know, and not actually showcase his true crimes. You know, he's, you know, he's gonna do. He's doing. He's been way worse than that. And you know, now the the people of the, you know, of all the newspapers, they've been making this. You know, was he right, Taylor? Oh, this one's got a couple in it. All right. uh, can I determine whether or not these are fakes? Oh yeah, like, like the 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 bad part about this is like. The pictures are legitimate. They didn't get edited. Like, it was literally like he changed words in the article to make it sound, like, less bad than it was. Like, there's definitely a picture of, like, this space meth lab that's being blown up with, like, Dark Star posing on another building, like, cape blowing in the background behind him. I choose to believe I didn't see that. <laughs> like, every time he shows up in there, he's always posing some way. Hmm. He's like, I like flipping things. Uh, looks like we got a legitimate folk hero in our hands. Like the great Jane. Folk hero? He's not a folk hero. He's been taking down all the businesses that, you know, are legitimate and that my cousin Why do you call for. Some, why do you call... Your cousin worked for a meth lab, you idiot. Whoa, 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 whoa. It, there's no meth lab. He said it was a legitimate business. So from the looks of it, this, this Dark Star only takes down legitimate drug empires. <laughs> Yeah, I say folk hero because these kinds of people tend to accrue a certain following. Captain, in the fall captain, captain, captain. Like, if you oh, catch here, him, he, he built a statue right here. You know, like you captain, see a statue of Darkstar in like a dumb captain, big village, like captain, captain. Exactly. Taylor, I got. Let me speak to Captain. <laughs> and I and I'm doing this nice and calm compared to normal. Captain, he's stealing your fans, and, and the pay is twenty thousand. All we have to do is capture him and bring him to a certain address. And we don't have to leave the station. Captain. What? Our little, our little friend here wants us to kidnap a local hero right in front of the entire picture of Absalom him station. Android slaves. <laughs> Ooh, I like this guy. I should write a song about him. I'm getting not mad that he's doing that, but. Jigen, he's such a pretentious prick that they made a statue of him. I'm sorry that he got to it before you did. <laughs> Me too. Don't worry. It just gives us a standard to make yours bigger. Also, ghost ship full of treasure. Captain, the syndicate will love you if you do this. Alternatively, I do have a third option. It turns oh, out, for the love of Christ. <laughs> what part of Jigen find us a job did none of you get? Well, no, no, it's cool. This one came from Jesus when he, like, you know, presented me the large bill for the new ship. Anyway, uh, turns out some androids have started, like, androiding flying other species, and they kind of sort of maybe made an evil, sapient, giant worm thing. Anyway, he wants us to kill one and bring its guts back. That sounds like a trap, Captain. Don't listen to him. What you really should listen to is that this guy, Darkstar, is taking up your fame. <laughs> Jigen gives like that, that like, huh, all right, kind of nod to uh, the suggestion of this giant worm thing. Wait, how much worm thing pay? How much does it? You kind of skip that part. Uh, the giant worm pays. Let's see. One credit. It pays Enough off your debt. Your is kind of how it got told to you. So okay, it's well. about thirteen thousand approximately, Perfect. which translates into our new shiny ship. Here's a question I have for you, Taylor. Cletus mm -hmm. is and kind enough to give you a loaner ship. Hmm. And Jigen. if we don't do the rat's job, we cannot get off the station, can we? Well, I mean, we still have our other ship. 
Uh, Jigen, you could probably pull some strings and get a pirate to give you a ship, but you'd have to split credit the credit or the uh, the credits with them. Do we still have our old ship or no? Uh, it's in stages of being ripped apart. Like Cletus was putting you through the ringer and forcing your hand to go do something for him. Oh. So, in the absence <laughs> I can, of, I can get us a ship. In the absence of better work. I think we're killing Darkstar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not killing him, Captain. We're just capturing him and bringing him to a certain address. To the proper Captain. authorities. Captain. I get that you're like a legendary outlaw and all that, but this is professional suicide for you. Yeah, I where? I can get us a ship. Yeah, but we don't know how much... The... You see, here's the problem. Is that... If we take your ship, the ship that you can get us, which I assume would come from your friends, we have to pay them some not insignificant portion of what we find. And we don't even know what we're going to find. <laughs> what we could find is nothing. It's a legendary ghost ship. We don't have to tell them we found anything. For everything. We just, we, just <laughs> have to pay, we just have to pay the price of gas. Hey, uh, can we afford the price of gas right now, Taylor? Uh, I don't know. How much does gas cost? You could. Yes. It's normally not a problem on an Absalon station, but the further out you get, the, the fuel becomes more expensive kind of thing. I need to see this pirate sh or this ship that we'd be borrowing before we take off. Of course. Wouldn't let you... Wouldn't fly out without letting <laughs> all three of you look it over. Now, in the meantime, I gotta go hawk this. And he holds up the the Doshka. Mm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whatever happened to that, that relic we got from the the planet with the drugged out fuckers? I still got it, Captain. It's that Black thing. Lots crystal. Why don't we sell that thing? Here, give it up. <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> captain, captain, captain. Can't give this away. I didn't say give it away. I said hawk it. Yeah, yeah. that. That is not and... something you hawk, Captain. That is something you hold on to, spread rumors about, then develop hawk an interest it. in, Drive up the then place. hawk. Also, Captain, knowing the right people to sell it to would help. People like the Syndicate. You... I don't think he realizes that the syndicate is a is the, is a mafia. Yes, he does not realize this in any way. No, he's that, always that's out loud. Yeah. That's out loud. No, no. Yep. He he's just looking at you like all his friends. His friends are just don't. He just doesn't understand why his friends are saying no to this. <sighs> Give me the device. Um, Jigen, you've been around space pirates long enough to know that um, Ab or what is it, Abadar Corp? has a outstanding bounty on a piece of tech that went missing. It was a prototype um, kind of mapping device that uh, went missing on that ship. So far, no one's found it, but while the, while the like bounty for that device is not very high, it's only about 2,000 credits, it would get you an in with, Ab with Abadar Corp, who controls most all the money inside the station. In addition to mysterious riches we may find, um, I think we can also get an in with the court. That's great. Give me the device. Here you go, Captain. Thank you. Jigen, get us that mm. ship. We'll meet back here in, in a couple hours. I'm going to go network and display this device around and uh, set up an auction. I... But I'll set it up for a month from now, so that way they have time to investigate what this fucking thing is. Okay, we may want to look out. That thing's pretty valuable. We sold it from some pretty shady people. That's kind of why I'm doing it now, where we're going to be on the pirate ship. Hmm, point. Um, 
I think to set up a auction at kind of like with people that can actually buy an artifact, um, we're gonna call it an extended test. So okay, you can pick any skill you want to kind of basically tell me how to sing up the auction. Eventually, a computer use will need to be made. Um, a diplomacy for basically the ad. Um, and maybe some sort of appropriate, like, profession or craft type skill. Sure. So, first things first is I'm going to, it's going to be a double blind auction. Okay. If you're familiar with that term. Basically, no one knows who's involved. Uh, double blind means no one knows the buyer and no one knows the seller and the, the, the sellers or the buyers don't know each other. Yep. So you don't know who you're bidding against and you don't know who's, who you're buying from. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm going to do that. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to attempt a, um, a disguise check to try to make that work if I may. I think that's appropriate to, to basically set up the double blind. To give you an idea of how an extended test works, basically it's multiple rolls to equal a total number. Um, this yeah. is a pretty big item, so when I say 100, that's not too crazy for the fact that you're selling an artifact. Yeah, 22. Okay, so you're at 22, and I think that that is enough to, to sufficiently set up a double blind. Um, to get it done right, you basically inc include a couple different brokers. Um, some auction houses and things like that so that all the information just kind of gets spread and filtered through a bunch of different houses. Um, IDs are protected via using like electronic devices for bidding um, and the auction houses that um, that's primarily over it is a umbrella uh, umbrella underneath the umbrella of Abadar Corp so it has the best electronic security for your clients and yourselves. Okay. The next would be the diplomacy check uh, to set up the ad, which is 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay. So 47 in total so far. Okay. And use computers to get it posted will be the last check that you could do at this time. Okay. Unless you guys stay for extra days on the station and to make sure that this gets done before you leave. An 18. 18, okay. I was going to say, did you want help with that? Oh. So All you right. are at 65 right now. If you want to continue making tests to make sure that this thing gets set up properly, that you get everybody you want, um, you can stay longer so that you can make extra tests but basically each test from this point forward that you make will be in another day that you are waiting which means that the data that Jigen received may go bad in the meantime yep yeah, nope i'm gonna i mean we have time or in the drift to for me to <laughs> configure stuff i i would expect Absolutely. so uh, that's what i'll do when we're on the way when we're underway okay <laughs> Taylor, you already have coordinates, so there's not even going to be a piloting role for this. It's basically plugging them in. Um, they're very old school coordinates, like they they are like the kind that you'd have to enter digit by digit instead of like doing the calculations and breaking out the astronav computer to assist you. They're very precise. Um, and then you get to the end, and this is like plus or minus one, and you're like, ah, oh, goddamn it. <laughs> so. With Hero. that in mind, it's going to take you a total of seven days to get out to where the ship is supposed to be. Okay. Uh, dumb armor augment question before we get on our way. Uh, there's an armor augment called Tensile Reinforcement, which lets you treat an item as if it were high levels higher for hardness of hit points. Yep. But I can put that in myself. What does that do? Um, you get treated as far as five levels higher for harness and hit points? Which would be amazing. <laughs> not not for your, your hit points as far as your character is concerned. It would be for like the electronics on your body. Um, which would mean if somebody is doing something like to purposely break your electronics, that's when it would come in handy. Mm. So like for example, let's say Jigen took the Doshka he had and just jams it into your cybernetics. It's going to make them more durable to that sort of thing. Hmm. Eh, still probably worth it. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, underway. 
Okay. While you're underway, you're going to have, uh, I said, how many days? Five? Seven. No, seven. That's right, because five was the base number and then my D6. So seven days, um, which means you guys could make one check a day per person towards this auction if you want. Um, just tell me how you're helping in, in getting the auction in place. Right now, it's 65 out of 100 to complete the action of setting up the auction. I am going to use my uh, criminal background here, my criminal profession. I actually have profession outlaw. Okay. Yes, I'm not the only one who took a profession. It's some kind of out, some kind of criminal background. Thank so you. So you post it on your Facebook? Uh, no, but I'm gonna you know back channels and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh. Nineteen. All right, so. Seventy four. Day one. Anybody else gonna help out? Yeah, I was actually gonna use my profession also, my burglar profession. <coughs> um, trying to give information about the object based upon what I've noticed, what I what I know, what how uh, what I can find out via my contacts of um, in, in the underworld like this. Trying to just okay. give description to so people, so buyers know a little bit more about it, so they're not, they're less afraid to actually put heavy money towards it. Um, that's fine. Understand that when you involve criminal elements like, uh, like Mardok did and you're about to, um, they become aware of said object. True. So while you guys don't have the object where they expect it to be, the more criminal elements you start to involve, the more likely that people are going to come and try and take your shit. <clears throat> True. Um, Think of it this way. I have a threshold that I'm not going to tell you. And you are 19 towards that threshold currently. Alright. I will... Um, I'm not going to do that then. Because... I can't chance that. But I, I might ruin it for the, because uh, I will hit high with my number. Okay. Um, then I will. Then I'll put in a um, a uh, I'll put in a bluff check. Then trying to spruce up the the wording of it, using just my own knowledge of it, whether or not I'm it might be embellishing or not. So here's another thing that you could do with bluff checks. You could attempt to basically drive up interest by putting in false bids. That works. I didn't know that was part of it. I thought, that would be under, I thought that would be under diplomacy. No, no that's lying. Diplomacy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that, yeah. <clears throat> um, that? 26. Okay. And that finishes you out with 100. So it is. Uh, I, you guys have kind of padded the uh, the results. I actually wanted want to, to do to, something else. I was gonna say if you want to go over, you can, and it will basically change marketplace value essentially. Uh, Taylor, can you increase the uh, cybersecurity for this auction? That's actually what I was gonna suggest. So yes. We computer check. Okay. It, let's let's go ahead and get it, and I'll tell you if you discovered any anomalies in your process of upgrades. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, oh, right, I got them on vacation now. So, so 13, da, 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 da. 31. Okay. Uh, you go through to do the upgrades, and you notice that Avatar Corp has a mining program inside the security. And basically, it's gathering information, even though it's protecting it from other people. Abadar Corp is collecting information on those that are bidding in this auction and participating. Like, you see Kobe's IP address show up like 18 times. Like, he definitely masks Google. It, but you know all 18 IP addresses that he uses. <laughs> you, know, you know all my masks. You know it. <laughs> Bitch. You can you can fix that with the number that you have, but that's extra information that you gained because your roll was so well. Cool. 
I'll inform the captain of this while I'm in the middle of fixing things. I mean, so far, all it's done is track Kobe's fake address, IP addresses, so not hmm. a big loss, but you're able to secure it so that basically Abadar Corp will not get that data. Hmm. You can cool. also take control of it and get that data yourself if you want. Ooh. That Do you so tell me that? Data. That would be important to me. Uh, we are new yeah, I'd tell you about it. I would tell you, fuck yes, get data, because that data we can use to increase or change the auction bids. Yes, sir. T tell Sean congratulations on his victory. All right. Uh, do you either check for that, or is my 31 good enough? No, you're able to, to take control of it. Cool. Cool. So you'll you'll receive the updates with the client list. Um, I'm not actually going to make a client list because there's going to be fictionally a lot of people that are interested in this object. Uh, the bids will vary quite a bit, um, but you can pretty much tell who the big bidders are as the thing goes along. Um, is there anything else you guys want to do to um, <laughs> sway things towards your advantage? As far as big name purchasers, uh, Hell Knights are one of them. Uh, Galorian Knights are one of them and Abadar Corp are one of them. And then there is a uh, a single buyer that is... Uh, let me think here. Except we they don't know they're bidding against each other, which is kind of hilarious. Mm. I mean, they're big corporations slash... They, like, prob they, they, they probably know. That the others are involved, but you have solid proof that they're all bidding against each other. Um... There is a, uh, a woman named Amiri who's also bidding, and she's keeping up with the corporations. I want to use diplomacy and or bluff your choice to uh, play the bidders off of each other. So you're going to basically send them emails that, like, mask your identity and feed them information about each other's bids and stuff? Yep. Okay. I will make Taylor, uh, I will ask Taylor if he don't doesn't mind sending these out as messages, basically, accidentally leak the, uh, the bids. Here's the, uh, here's the email that I've written up and, you know, you secure it for me. The email that I've written up will garner us a 28 total as a as my test. Okay. So um, you're not going to see direct results of that for a little while, but you've kind of set the ball in motion. <clears throat> All right, let's fucking kill pirates. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we were killed... You know, no, let's I'm let's not, steal from pirates. No, basically, no, yeah. Let's go be the bad guys. I don't want to steal from pirates. Yeah, no, that's that's what that's what the syndicate is, there, buddy. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, no, I mean. <laughs> Which one is it? Yes or no? <laughs> Hold on. I have to, I'll, I'm going to go through my calendar, Chris, and try to figure out, is, has Fred ever crossed me yet? <laughs> this is his first time. You, you open your calendar to find out? Is that yes. what you normally would catalog these things? Yes, I catalog them <laughs> in my, my calendar. Okay. Um, there's a reason he's called single cross, Fred. You're not entirely yeah. certain that he double crossed you, but you're pretty certain he single crossed you at least. But is this the first time, or is this the, or, because I need to make sure, Chris, because he would only cross me once if he'd single cross Fred. Yeah, it, 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 he's only crossed you once. That's why he's single cross Fred. Oh. You seem to misunderstand the term double cross. Ex exactly. That's the, <laughs> that's what I'm going for, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> Oh, <laughs> everybody makes a mistake, right? You just won. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Damn it! He crossed me like I said he would do it this time. Yeah. Dude, At least I know that next time he won't do it. Whew, how, at least he got how, that out of the way. How do you know next time he won't do it? Because he's only he only crossed people once. What? That's his name. It's Cross Red. I, it, I, get, I get a feeling he's got a cousin named Nine Times Cross Steve. <laughs> no, no, no. You Chris, see? Chris. They're all the same person. <laughs> They're all you the same one. You see a, uh, you know, he's starting to have a tick with his eye. All of a sudden he's like, I smell toast. Am I, am I having a stroke? I'm going to pat the captain on the shoulder. I'm going to get us a ship. <laughs> and I'll leave. Am I, am I having, no, we're already in the ship, in the drift. Oh, yeah, are we? You guys have taken a, uh, a pirate. The best way to describe this is, uh, like, a slip, kind of. It's, it's a massive <laughs> ship. It's armed way more than it should be, but it has, like, no sensors, <laughs> like, because they just wanted more room for guns and gun <laughs> controls. It's like half the no guns shields. are, like, duct taped on. Because they, they're fast. They don't need shields. Like, this is what the, <laughs> the pirate captain is telling you. He's like, basically, we need a lot of guns and a lot of speed, and that's what you've boarded. Taylor, you don't feel safe at all. <laughs> like they don't even have basic computers on board here. They're doing this like analog. Oh god! I'm not even sure how they're traveling through the drift at this point. St stick and rudder, man. Stick and rudder. I'm gonna like oh, do actually... little things, like remind Taylor how close we are to the drift. Like I'm gonna take him over to a point in the hall and be like, Taylor, <laughs> put your hand up against the hall right here. And he's like, what? Okay. And I'm like, There's four, like six inches. Breaches the hull for a moment while your hands on the wall. <laughs> Dude, you heard of this ship, hull breaches. I'm the one who's still the most likely to survive, right? <laughs> Does your warp, ass. the warp comes through and, like, leaves, like, butterflies <laughs> scatter about the cabin. Because, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, you say that like it's never happened. Magic before. in space. Mm. So, yeah, Chris, chaos? These dudes are pretty, pretty, uh. <laughs> these guys are a lot better than people expect. I mean, they're able to, to fly the drift without any computers. I mean, think about it. They do have a drift engine, but that's basically it. But it's it's pretty yeah. hard. A lot of the stuff they, that they, they do... turn it on and they steer it by by eye. They they, yeah. they fly space via eye, and they're able, somehow still living. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty boss when it comes to navigation, though. Just just, just saying. <laughs> Take like, a rudder. Exactly. <laughs> they use astro navigation in space. <laughs> <laughs> they have an astro lab. <laughs> The fact that they, no, still they, do, no, they just have like and they break out old charts and shit. <coughs> they have like oh. a stack of a hundred charts. Like this chart is for the point space. This chart During is for this, this point in space. Because it's that yeah. very specific. <laughs> How did you organics manage to get off planet? Honestly, originally with computers. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna like, these guys. I'm gonna like point this at the stack of papers. Ingenuity <laughs> and effort hmm. and like, a whole lot of luck. Is, is, is this ship still made out of wood? I'm so confused. That part is. It's still, it's still a steel ship, but basically it's a flying coffin with guns attached to it. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> uh. I feel right at home. <laughs> uh. When you guys exit the uh, the warp, nothing terrible comes through with you. Um, there is the problem of like butterflies all over the cabin inside, though. Like They're just fucking everywhere. It's completely harmless, but you gotta deal I with it. I start capturing the blood butterflies. Jigen might want them for his garden. I want the butterflies to attract women. See, we get more butterflies, we get more women for for captaining. We get more butterflies for Jigen. See, good friend I am. Okay. He says that all lot. This is like just his ridiculous act to himself. <laughs> I love that idea of just the rat folk talking about how good of a friend he is out loud to no one in particular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the derelict ship, the quietest, is in front of you. It's, it's um, kind of a large battleship, kind of the best way to describe it. Um, let me see what frame would that be. It 
It's a uh, a cruiser, actually. I don't want it to be as big as a battleship. Okay. Cruiser's still pretty big. And um, it's lying derelict in front of you. The bay that would house for like um, vehicles to come out, like a smaller fighter or or an exploratory ship, um, is completely blown open. That seems to be the main entryway into this ship. You can see the flicker of lights and energy. Um, most most drifters will actually power your ship indefinitely. It's just like the fuel jumps is where they, they run into problems. Hmm. So there's more than likely um, air on board this ship if the, if the uh, atmospheric controls are still working, but there's at least light, and you can tell that from, from being across from them. The, uh, the pirates go, okay, looks like you guys need a pod, and the pod looks suspiciously like a, uh, like a rowboat, <laughs> but made of metal. Does nice. it at least have a bubble? Yeah, it's it's got like the 1950s cosmonaut bubble on it. All right, I get in. I start getting it ready. I'll get on a space suit at this point. Yeah, me too. I look slightly the problem for looking at Jigen. I hate everything that you stand for and everything that you are. <laughs> after I get it set up, Chris. Fine. Chris, after I get it set up, I will see if there is a space suit that I can use. There is. Um... <laughs> and the, the pod actually is is piloted by stick and rudder. So like there's like just this little stick in the back and that's how you how you actually point the pod. Yeah! You know? I uh if if Taylor does not immediately grab it, I will try try to because I'm like enamored by this way of traveling through space. How? Is your hand that's one of the way? No. What? <laughs> We're gonna what? have a computer flyer. This, this is no, this is supposed to be a non computer flyer. That's dumb. Like you said, you got out of here by computer, so computer will get you there. I sit in the seat and grab the rudder. The captain just passes out. He, he says, how? And then passes out from sheer stupidity of this rowboat. <laughs> so, how it actually works I'm gonna, like, is sit there. down. Okay. Because, Taylor, you're, you're an electronically curiosity-driven curiosity mind. Basically, there's a mechanism that, <laughs> that creates a pinion. And the stick, you move left and right, and you can also move it up and down. It's basically kind of like a swivel joint, right? Mm. And then there's a thruster attached to the other side of the, the stick. Uh, so literally all you're doing is pointing the thruster where you want to go. Uh, <laughs> On the bright side, the pod can be directed, which is unusual for a lot of pods. Usually they just shoot out straight. And then they arc their way over to a planet. Hmm. And hope for the best. I was hoping that you were going to put, like, you know, jet thrusters on uh, oars, Chris. That, that, <laughs> and that they only work via kinetic motion. So the, so as you actually, you know, use them to put try out on a boat. Right. <laughs> Space time rudders. Exactly. <clears throat> All right. Well, I take us over. Okay. I say our first step is we find engineering. Make sure we can breathe. I'll give you a thumbs up. I'll do that. This doohickey on my wrist says that we so can eat do it. Do you grab, or do you, or do you own a space, like, suit to begin with? Me? No. Yes. I, I, tr I tried to grab one. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, they'll have one. There's the Space pirate rats are not uncommon. Yeah. They're, they're everywhere. We're everywhere, and you know, even even spaceships, um, you know, pirates would want rats on their ship. I get it. Yeah. I feel like I feel like pirate ships have way too many space rat suits because they think there's like thirteen of them on the ship, so they gotta get suits for all of them. But in reality, there's like four. That does not sound like pirates. No, that sounds it's like you know the other way around. They only have four <laughs> suits and like thirteen rat folk on board. That's what I'm saying. Like that, like they would afford for that. All right, fair enough. So they think there's like 13, so they get like five seats. But there's only four, so there's still extra. <laughs> so, or they just don't care and give them one anyway. <laughs> so you guys pull into the uh, the bay of the Quietus, and uh, a couple of... You guys actually have the instruments. The pod does not. Um, after the pod's little glass dome, like, hatches open, the measurements or the instruments on your suit says that there's a vacuum inside the room you're currently in, but you can see a, a, a moon portal essentially 
uh, like a vacuum vacuum room that's at the end of this bay. Um, right now it's to you guys, but if you were to close it, so long as the system works, it should vent and let you into the ship just fine. So long as there's air inside of it. Do we have to like tie off the little rowboat? <laughs> yeah. I'd... It's it's got right. an anchor. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no! Hey, it doesn't work! It's a magnetic it's, anchor. It's a magnet! Yeah, it's a magnetic anchor. It clicks, to the, <laughs> clicks to the ship. God, it's, it's like you've never been on a pirate ship before. Like, never! <laughs> I've never been on a pirate ship this antiquated before. Oh, uh, these are the best! <laughs> oh, I miss these days. You had to actually think about what you were doing. You people are retarded. You, you want to know how pirates survive? It's because they can't... They, pirates can't afford to be lazy with technology. They have to use crap, and they have to know how to use it. They can't just push a button and get fed. We, we can't so, either. We have to actually yeah, grab the food first. Yeah. Think about this. There's actually a little bit of niche in the pirate's design. Because the ship is so antiquated, it actually won't come up on sensors and things like that. That's a ship. Like, it gets read as junk debris. <laughs> so, like, the only way to spot a pirate ship is to visually spot them when they're like this. So, pirate ships bring everybody down to their level to fight them. <laughs> yeah. Fucking genius. Use your technology against you. No. no. Do not encourage him, Nine. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I was just thinking that maybe I could create, I mean, you know, come up with something in case we need to escape from people for a little bit, you know, where they, you know, <coughs> you know, Captain. Get or ECM, excuse me. It's not the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. Yes, they, they are using a very primitive, primitive version of electronic countermeasures. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally the same thing. By not having electronics. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you could do the thing by hiding in an asteroid and turning everything off. Mm. Yeah, but they get to move. Yeah, I'm, d I'm done with this conversation. I'm moving through the door to the moon portal. Okay. I take out my laser pistol. Everybody else moving to the moon portal. Yeah, it's gonna make yeah. sure we're secure. Okay. My laser pistol is actually loaded and has a firing pin in it. All right. Yeah. <coughs> Taylor, like, what is your your base computer like? If you make no rolls. Uh, let's take a look. 13. 13. That's enough to activate the doors without having to make any roll. Um, yeah. You go over to the panel and there's some loose wiring and you can see where basically people have been jump-starting this panel to get in and out. Um, you could actually fix it if you want to make a roll or you could just like touch the wire do like everybody else has done for a couple hundred years now. Hmm. Exactly. Depends on how primitive you want to be. You know, you know, like an elbow nudge. If you fix Can it, I fix it and add an access code? If you fix it, it will. You can rekey it. There is an access code already on it. Cool. I'll do that. Okay. I got anyone slipping in behind us. All I'm saying is, you know, we have a completely, you know, completely well-known abandoned ship, right for the taking. Hi. Uh, I was going to ask if it was salvageable, but then I realized we do that shit all the time, and I didn't want to give that shit to Chris unless he was like, I intended for you to salvage it. You can try if so. you want, but the ship's in pretty terrible shape. You Like, just eyeballing yeah. it, you can tell it is. Yeah, I would say, like, literally scrap it if we're going to salvage it. You don't it. have a big enough crew to be able to make this thing work. Yeah. That's not we, can hire people. We, we have an android who wants to become a ship. I'm not becoming this piece of shit. This piece of <laughs> chip? Don't even get clever with me. Okay? Alright, you made this journey less fun. Let's go. Right. Uh, Nine. Okay. Basically, what this is mechanically doing is you're setting a trap, if you will, with a DC-29 for somebody who threw without the code. Somebody has the code, they bypass it immediately. Cool. Hey, uh, what's the code? Uh... Kill Six comms. Seven. Kill external Jumpstar comms. Jumpstar is the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... I will either write out or, like, signal out or just show the code to them. Rather than, like, 
saying it. It's like a 16 digit like number code. It's nonsense. It's a... <laughs> yeah, I, I took up my camera phone and I took a picture. <laughs> I remember it because I'm not that dumb. I'm just naive. <laughs> We has figured out that it's a, like a logarithm of your birthday is encoded. <laughs> Got it. All right, so you guys make it past the moon gate. The moon gate is the uh, the moon portal, rather, has been uh, locked so that um, <coughs> the access in and out uh, through code only, or breaking it, which is also an option. Mm. Now that you're in here. Uh, it takes a few moments, and you can hear the hiss, and the through your suits, you don't really feel it, but you can feel it across the uh, the little diodes that are attached to your nerves. The air inside the ship is very cool, but you can feel that there's actually flowing air. That there's oxygen uh, scrubbers that are working inside the ship. Um, they wouldn't be scrubbers, generators mm. inside the ship. Um, after a few moments, everybody's suit, there's like a little dial that basically like measures the oxygen on your sleeve and you can see that you're inside the uh, the green breathable zone for humans mm. there's actually like four green zones but you have to know which race you are to figure out if you're in the correct one am I in the correct one as a Lashanta uh, yes you are Okay, I take my helmet off or open up to the the ear because I assume it has an emergency ah shit it's bad thing yeah yeah well yeah, it does Looks like you can you can start to press the relief and you can feel that there's like fresh air coming in. So after yeah. a moment, you hear that as the helmet comes off. Mm. I'll do the I, same. Looks like the air generators have been on for a while. Hmm. Wonder what's in here. I like it's take out stale, but it's oxygen. So yeah. Ah, smells I'll, like the garbage dump at home. I'll keep my laser rifle at the ready. this real quick. Um, make a wisdom save for everybody. All right. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I have a non-natural 20. I have a 21. I have a 15. 18. So 16 and above. Um, doesn't <laughs> feel right here. Um, you can't quite put your finger on it, but there, like, it's it's in this moment that you feel like there is some truth to the the idea that this might be like a ghost ship, and that weird shit happens here. Um, but you're wise enough to understand that it's probably more complicated than ghosts, but you'll have to find out as you go through. For six, for fifteen and below, shit feels real scary in here, bro. Um, it feels like the place might be haunted. You're definitely positive yeah. it's haunted. Way to be shaggy. <laughs> I look around and I say, "No reason they call this a ghost ship." Or, I get why they call this a ghost ship. I mean, it's totally a real ship. I mean, ghosts could maybe be on it, but this the ship itself is real. <laughs> Not a ghost at all. Maybe Look at ghosts this. operate it. Nine, you're an idiot. I, no, I think it's I think it's onto something. I will cast detect magic and sweep it across the ship. See if I find any like obviously magical signatures. Okay, you said sweep it across the ship. Um, is it limited to sixty feet, just like normal Pathfinder? Uh, probably. Let me check. Da, 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 da. I imagine since you're a technomancer, it's probably a little bit more technical, like that classic sci-fi sweep where it's just like laser lights all over the place. Yeah, I got like those like spec style like holographic things popping up over my arms. So I sweep it around. Yeah, uh, sixty foot cone. So yes. Okay. So as a cone, so that makes the hologram on the arm actually really cool because basically you're holding it up, and where you point that arm is where the cone's pointed. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, there's definitely magic pretty much throughout the whole ship, but there's something like kind of further down the corridor that is like a lot of magic. Um, it's a source of ambient magic that's in the ship. Mm, I'm picking up a 
noticeable source of magic straight up ahead. Yeah, after a few moments, you're able to figure out that it's kind of just at the edge. So about 60 feet from where you are right now. 60 feet. Okay. Uh, when we get within, within range, I'll grab it. So I'll walk up to 40 feet, and then I will stick my hand out, and I will pull on the object with my, my psychokinetic hand. Okay, once you get to about 40, um, you're able to see what the object is. Do you want to see it before you make your choice to grab it, or you just grab it? No, nope. my psychokinetic hand is, tele it's my telepathy. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Stopping it. Because I assume the tailor or or none or Jigen will want it. Okay. I got guns at the ready. Here's the next question: Do you have to see the object to direct your hand? I assume it's basically mage hand, right? Uh, well, you point your finger uh, at a target object, gaining the ability to lift it, move it at will from a distance. You can't perform complex actions such as firing a gun, computer. But you can shut a mechanical door, lid, and work simple button. No, doesn't say you need. So, so, so are you, like, personally, not see this thing, or are you just? No, I'm standing out in the middle, just kind of like. What you see is kind of this large open um, bay. It has multiple entrances, um, kind of around it. Inside the center of this this bay is like a dropped out floor area still you're on the second floor um the bay would house something in the middle and you're not really sure what its original purpose is but there's this large um kind of sickly looking tree that has branches that come out and there's these vines that dangle down with these glowing like bioluminescent orbs um so your telekinetic hand cannot pick up the whole tree so are you going to pick up i'm just going to it's too large. Let's see if I can get a branch, and then I'll try to snap it and pull it back. I will not touch it. I'll leave it floating in the air when it gets to us. Okay. If it gets to us. So you uh, you break off a branch, and there's because you're doing it telekinetically, you can almost feel like someone is screaming in the brain when the brain when the branch comes off, uh, but it dies off instantly. It's just like this. Full force scream for about a second, and then it stops. Hmm. I will detect thoughts. Okay. Um, when you go to detect thoughts, it's it's weird. Like, if you detect thoughts on an object, there's like this feeling that you get that hey, that's an object. It doesn't have thoughts. Yeah. This thing feels like it has the ability to have thoughts, but has none at the moment. Hmm. Okay. I will speak in people's minds, and I will tell you that the uh, there's a small branch coming towards us. It can think. Huh. I don't believe you. Uh... I just look at you curiously, to, like, why do you not believe me? Just to be kind of uh, thorough about it, this this tree is basically like a um, like one of those trees in the south that basically has those long, like, droopy, like, yeah. vine-like arms, but they have these big bulbous, like, glowing bioluminescence down. It looks mostly bare, other than a few of them that are still left. Right. Hmm. Could I make a mysticism roll to see if I know anything about? Possibly sentient, glowing magic tree things. Sure. Hmm. Pretty good. Uh, twenty-six. Okay. Um, with the twenty-six, there are definitely sentient plants in the universe. You've never experienced anything quite like this, and you're not really sure exactly what is happening here. Um. 
without further detail from Soren or you guys working together, it's hard for you to narrow down exactly what it is. There's there's at least a dozen or so in, intelligent plant species that take the shape of trees that you know of, but it's not really your specialty. Maybe perhaps, I don't know, a botanist might be able to help you. I have a botanist. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we do. That skill would be useless, huh? <laughs> <coughs> like, All right. I will uh, float it in front of Jigen. Because plants don't think. It's kind of an outlandish claim. Can I touch it? Yeah. I mean, as long as nobody stops you. No, that's that's me asking. That's Jigen asking Sorian. Uh, there are several sentient trees out there, buddy. The twig will move away from you. I'm not sure that you should be touching it if you're not aware there are sentient plants in the universe. Yeah, like, Sor Soren comes from a planet that has a lot of them. <laughs> Actually, uh, my racial thing is I'm really good with both physicals and life sciences. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. oh, so it's like a well-known, it's like a, a thing that there yeah, are plants you, out there that you can think? know that there's intelligent plant life out there. Okay, all um, right, never mind. You're literally a flat earther, Nate. That's what you're saying. It, <laughs> no, never mind. I won't say that then. Yeah, I mean, it, you saying that there are no intelligent plants would be similar to, like, Flat Earth Theorist. All right, yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to do that, then. <coughs> that make it to alienate all the Flat Earthers out there that watched us play D&D. &D. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're talking about, you know, planets that are rounds <laughs> right now, okay? I'm pretty sure we've already alienated them by just by playing the game. I was going to say, to be fair, the Earth is flat. The problem is we see in three dimensions, so we're just adding extra dimension. Stop it! Don't 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 give me <laughs> <my> <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so then uh, anyway. when we rewind, I'll I'll like uh, <laughs> in front of you. You have any ideas? Uh, I'm I'm gonna roll life science. Okay. See what I can come up with. I would like to assist him, if I may. I make the TC to a system to give him a plus two. Uh, that comes up to a 25. Okay, with a 25, um, this plant is at the cellular level. Um, not just because Soren broke it off. Like, like if Soren broke off a plant or just took like a leaf off of a plant, it slowly dies. This thing has been dead. There's no way that it, it died in the distance from that tree right. to where you are um, at, at the cellular level. Literally every cell has, has gone and, and, and passed. Um, as you touch it, it's actually um, petrified. Can I tell what by? Hmm. If it's like steel dust, if it's gems in it, or so it's um it's petrification <clears throat> seems to be related to uh, kind of the same effect that happens to like the petrified woods. Basically, it's a it's a weird natural anomaly. You don't see any sort of interference outside of like there was probably a bi change to this plant at some point that caused it to become petrified. Okay. So you're saying the sentient plant is petrified? Yep. And scared? I'm saying it's dead. I Can't was just feel. making bad puns. Yeah, no, I was ignoring them. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. No, this, this thing's dead. Like, you said it could think? Yeah, it screamed in my head when I ripped it off. And then when I All moved to... Just <clears throat> to point out, there are luminescent globes that are still lit on that tree. And then when I went to read its mind, I could tell that even though it wasn't currently thinking, it has the capacity to think. Well, is biologically there... speaking, this thing is dead as... Is there such a thing as undead plants? I don't know. Is there, Chris? I mean, with the with the rolls that you made earlier, <clears throat> nothing has been discovered as of yet of an undead. Plant. 
Not that I know of. Mm. I do know. I do know that there are species and critters in the universe that can appear dead or lie dormant for many, many, many years, hundreds of hundreds of years, in fact, then uh, come back to life. Let's also, go see this tree. See the tree? I don't think we should see the tree. I think we're going to have to see the tree. I think the tree is a bad idea. I disagree. Oh, uh, you can disagree all you want. Why can't we see the tree? I didn't say we couldn't see the tree. I said we shouldn't see the tree. Why shouldn't we see the tree? Because that's a bad idea. Part of that you're... didn't get the first time. That's you. I'm, I'm done with you. I'm gonna walk over and, and take a look at the tree. Okay. Um, there's a set of like these these double doors that kind of like quick parts. They've been locked mm -hmm. open, and that's where the branch kind of floated through. Um, as soon as you kind of step through, you can feel uh, the best way is like an arcane energy to the air inside the room that you've stepped in. It's all tingly. The emergency lights inside the entire ship, which has been countering this whole time. But you can see where there's um, this room is kind of an octagon shape. There are um, kind of an old style of lighting. It's very Baroque shadow. But there are these what look to be kind of crystalline structures that are designed to look like flame sconces attached to uh, each of the main corridors to get out of here. You're kind of at the top of the stairs. There's the second that goes around the whole thing. And then there are, let's see, you, the way you came plus each side of the octagon pathways. And, and you can see that they lead down some stairs. The one that's directly across from you is blown off by this um, dehydrated kind of uh, petrified tree thing. But on each side of the major walkway is one of these crystalline sconce things. Okay. Does the tree look like it was growing naturally and became this? Or like it's like it broke through the floor or something? Until you uh, get does... closer, it's hard to tell. It's definitely embedded into the floor, but you're not sure if it's embedded into the floor by design until you get closer to it or if it like broke through. Uh, I am in our approach. Okay. So we originally needed to stop at 11. If you guys are okay with it, I'm going to take us to 11.30 okay. since we started a little late to make sure that we get our full three hours. Cool. Okay. No! Yeah, that's fine. Cool. <laughs> so you go up to approach. Um, give me a perception check. This will kind of determine how much information you're able to glean from its root structure. Okay. All right. I got a 15. You said you got a 50? One five. Okay. Let me do something real quick here. And I wish I had roll down dice. That would make this easier. All right. So with a 50, which is ridiculous, by the way. 15. Oh, 15. I thought you said 5 zero. Well, well, say, no, no, no. One five. Insane. Even I couldn't hit those numbers, and I'm pretty sure I can hit the highest numbers here. Mm. I mean, it's Pathfinder, so it is possible to hit those numbers. But <coughs> <I can't. laughs> so, with a 15, you're looking at the root structure, and it's hard to tell. Um, there's... It looks like by design, if you had to venture a guess. Um, you're not familiar with this growing concept because it looks like the roots are embedded into the actual ship. Um, okay. But how it pierced its way through steel is, is it's, because looking at it, it pierced its way through. It didn't come up. Hmm. That that you can easily tell. <clears throat> uh, can I make a life sciences? Uh, based on the state of petrification, how long this thing's been dead? Sure. Uh, 22. With a 22, um, 
from what it looks like, it has probably been dead for uh, about 2,000 years, if you were to venture a guess, uh, which would Oof. make it pre-gap by quite a bit. Yeah. So you know how I said this thing's dead? Yeah. It's been dead for a while. That's great that you think it's dead, but something screamed out when I grabbed it, and I can definitely t detect thoughts. Look, I don't know what you can do with your magic -y magicness, but it's cellularly, not magic. this thing's dead. It's not magic. Cellularly, this thing's dead. I don't care what's in it. I mean, to be fair, intelligent undead, you can read their thoughts. So... Well then... If we are left with the option of an intelligent undead, that is a terrifying prospect. I don't think the tree's undead. I just think the minute. I think the ship really is haunted. Well, if there's something in it, why don't you blast it and find out? I nah, step this... back. Why the hell would I do that? Close my helmet. Hmm. Maybe we should search the rest of the ship for I, 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 I close my helmet. Airtight my suit. Hmm. I'm joining him with little like steam vents. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should take, the rest of the take ship. aim with my pistol. What the hell kind of brute do you take me for? I would put your helmet on. Three. Like, Don't yeah. shoot the Put's damn the tree. And out of the way. What did you say, Taylor? I will push the captain's hand out of the way. Why don't we search the rest of the ship before we shoot the thing? I shoot it with the gun in my in my holster. If I can take quick draw to do that shit, Chris. And you it's said true. you loved the idea. It's true. So he pushes away so, one with the other hand, like tips up the holster and shoots through. <laughs> um, since you have psychically bonded with the tree. You will hear it scream out in pain again. Um, the tree doesn't... Uh, from everybody who's not psychically bonded with this thing, he shot a tree. Like a bunch what of the hell are you doing? Of it. You have an idea how valuable this thing is? Yeah. You're literally it's shooting your own credits. I'll speak to it. Hello? No, like, in its brain piece. Um... The best way to describe the response you get is, like, static. <laughs> There's activity, but it's not responsive. It's in a Something vegetative state. is really wrong. Ah. It's tree. Yeah, so let's find out. It... Where are you going to find out? It's a tree. Science, the, uh, man. The bioluminescence on the tree. Pulsate. Oh, look what you did. I will step away from the captain. Me I too. will step away from the captain. Soren will step will... away from the captain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a captain's hat on the rat and walk backwards. <laughs> no, I'm going to say I stay with the captain. He might get in a fight. Like I'm going to leave my friend behind. Because <clears throat> if your friends don't dance, then... If they don't dance well, they're no friends of mine. Well, they probably can. If, I'm not, all my friends have to dance. They can be friends of mine. I feel like rat folk are very eclectic dancers. <laughs> like a hobby they all share. <laughs> now I'm just picturing Maybe. if I let those west. Some window. Like okay. the Living in America song? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Don't make, me, don't make me go like this, because I know that movie off the top of my head. <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, the bioluminescence, you guys kind of wait, nothing happens. Okay. See, nothing's happening. You worried over nothing, Taylor. Captain, I'm going to go look around, see if I can figure out anything about this. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can find a cockpit or a ship's log or something or other. All right. Well, let's let's do this. Split up, Scooby gang. And, 
Scooby and myself, I mean, nine and myself, <laughs> will go in this direction. Everybody that matters in the story, or excuse me, everybody that doesn't matter in the story will go in that direction. Guys, Nate's wearing orange. You know who else wears orange? Velma. Yes. I'm the smart and, one. And Tom's the pretty one, so he's obviously <laughs> Daphne. Duh. Mm, obviously. So that so, makes you Shaggy, because you're the one who's afraid, and I'm Scooby. Yeah. Yeah, because your name come with kind of rhymes. You're Chris. Chris. Chris, you're Fred. <laughs> so, so Taylor, uh, a third direction that was not specified. As you, <coughs> as you guys um, begin to kind of deliberate about who's going where, etc. Uh, there is a direction. Basically, there's there's seven directions you haven't gone. Because uh, it's an octagon shape. Uh, mm -hmm. The bioluminescence will pulse one more time. Again, no real detrimental things happen. Do we have detect life? Is the bioluminescence like pulsing along a pathway, or is it just like flaring up and then fading again? Um, where there's root ways that are sticking out of the metal plates, which happens kind of sporadically through the ship, when the bioluminescence light up, it's almost like there's circuitry that travels from the tree outward, as far as like how the pulse travels. All right. I got an uh, idea here. It kind we'll of follow. looks like a fractal pattern. If you're familiar <coughs> with fractals. Yep. Cool. I have an idea. Okay. We could shoot the tree with our cards. Oh, no. Why no? Why always no with Eugene? It's not always no. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you want to be completely broke after this venture? Yes. Then get off. Go back to the pirates and have to let them rob you blind. You're talking about being. I would rather be broke after this adventure than die. Then don't shoot the damn tree. It solve both those problems. Mm. The bioluminescence pulse. <laughs> Let's go, Scooby. Who Scooby? Oh, that's great. That's a great nickname. I'm just gonna go find the cockpit. I'm gonna go with Taylor. We're gonna go down to find ghosts. Okay. All right. The um, the camera stays in the room as you all kind of split up and look for things. Uh, Jigen, are you staying in the room or are you looking for something? I'm going with Taylor. Okay. So as you guys split up, camera stays inside the uh, the tree room, and the bioluminescence pulse one more time, and the crystal sconces come alive, and the ship seems to be in better repair. The sh tree itself looks alive and well. It has plenty now. Um, the bioluminescence that were on there uh, appear in sort of large, like, um, kind of pear-shaped fruit. Um, that's quite a bit bigger and it's kind of like got this like sappy interior that you can see through like a clear um, protective layer and um, there's music playing as the scene closes out I'm actually going to close it here because I wanted to reveal the fact that um, something weird's going down in this ship and that'll be the close of the episode I get it, it's the tree of might cool. it's the Christmas tree of might <laughs> 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 so that is all we have for today for everybody who tuned in thanks a lot uh, you guys know of the crew buy guns of a big online and such stuff uh, and I don't really have anything to promote at the moment other than I will be playing a uh, a song of ice and fire set not in Westeros uh, alternating Wednesdays for Blades in the Dark starting pretty so that'll be cool um, so make sure you check that out. That's going to be on Jeff Doty's channel, who's in Blades in the Dark. Uh, it's called Encounter Balance, and that'll be every other Wednesday. So from all of us here at Drop Dice, thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you all.